I'm like, oh, cool. Summer vacation in America. Like, I'm going to live in a jungle. I'm going to have a giant <laughs> what? parrot. I, I have no idea what I thought. A okay. parrot? <laughs> I thought yeah. I was going to have a parrot. Like, a, like a pirate. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. We are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we have a very special, special, special guest. Amelia Brodka is with us. Did I say that right? Brodka or Brodka? Brodka's good. Okay. <laughs> well, like in Polish, it's Brutka. Oh, says well, let it that me way. say it the right way. Amelia Brutka. Wow, you nice. can roll your R's. I can roll really my R's. Yeah. He's roll. trying to show off. Brutka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do we want to do like a extended, like Amelia, like, you, like you're going to, like, you're coming into the stadium. Amelia Brutka. Wow. A few rolls right there. Right? That was, that was wow. good. Yeah, we go. get at this sometimes. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. You should do like the live announcing. You should I should. Like the master of ceremonies. I should. The problem is, is I get, I do get people's names wrong all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I've got a problem. A I have it's a problem. A He's not wrong about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes they are not pronounced how they are spelled. Totally can empathize with that. And then there's people who, there's a proper way to pronounce their last name. But they do, they don't even pronounce they don't even use that they just mm. use the normal whatever anybody else is using right you know right Nora Vasconcelos it's you know that it's not Nora Vasconcelos right I mean that's but kind you, of obvious yeah right, right? Yeah. <laughs> you hear it all the ways Vasconcelos Nicole Haas Nicole House yes yeah. Yeah. Amelia Brodka Amelia Brodka, Brodka. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is, well, and they, most oh. of all people like don't end up caring they're like. Well, yeah, friends. say how I know. Want. I mean, Jerron, people call him Jerron, 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 Jerron. Yeah, I just at this point, I'm just going. Wait, with it's flash. always they say Jerome with an M. Yeah, Dude. I tell them, like, I'll be at Starbucks and I'll be like, Jerron, and then I see that they put an Emmy at the end. I'm like, Dude, all right, but they're notor- they're more notorious than me to getting names wrong, though, for sure. Yeah, who at all of Starbucks? Yeah. Okay, they, yes. They, they, <laughs> I think they put the wrong name on purpose. I think like they, they might do. Employ. I mean, they got to have a little fun in there, you know? This is true. Yeah. 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 It's a, probably a long day. That could be That could be it as well. Yeah, yeah. You got them working hard over there. Well, I just want to thank you for coming to the show. It's going to be amazing. I love it. I, I And also, I want to, first of all, apologize because you've been doing the exposure skate uh, events for 12 years now. You just wow. did the 12th one. And the reason I'm apologizing is because I just went to the first one. I just, I had never been before. They're always down in Encinitas. And I think that's where I, you know, that's my excuse. Oh, you know, I'm yeah. like, oh, it's far, you know. <laughs> but went down there. It was such an amazing time. I was just there for one day, but it was so, I loved every minute of it. It was so much fun. I Thank loved you it. for coming. Yeah. I mean, I know, especially on the weekend, hit some traffic. It's kind of tough getting down there, but hopefully you had a good time. You got good food. You enjoyed some skateboarding, chatted yeah. with some people, and... Uh, Honestly, just thank you so much for making the time. To oh come yeah, hundred percent. Like I said, I wish now I want to go every year. I'm always I'm looking forward to the next year because here's the thing: in, in the just in the last couple of years, I mean, the women's movement and skateboarding has been going on for a while now. I mean, obviously, you've been doing it for twelve years, but I feel like just in the last couple of years, it is just. I mean, they they lit the fuse and it's just good. It's going, hmm. you know, and it's so fun. To watch. I mean, I just found out I did the uh, uh, Woodward, the mano a mano, and that's where I first saw Ruby Lily, uh, Kakona, like all these girls, and I'm I became instant fans. Like, and I'm just I've been following them ever since, and it's so exciting to watch. Absolutely. I mean, these girls have just been progressing so quickly, and like you just said, Ruby Lily, she's been on such a tear. It was rad seeing her skate at Exposure and like the very next day she's on a Thrasher trip. And the weekend oh. before that, she's like doing demos at the When We Were Young Fest, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it's it's beautiful to see like girls like her have all these opportunities because when we were getting into skating, like we were like, what, can we can we be here? Like we really <laughs> want to be here. Like, yeah. can I skate with you? <laughs> you know? There was like yeah. questions, yeah. right? Yeah. It's yeah. so interesting. Because I mean, but also let's let's just be honest, like, 
we have you to thank for that. We have, you know, uh, Letitia to uh, thank for that. Uh, Lizzie Lizzie Steamer, Armanto. Alyssa Steamer, Steamer. Like, there's a long... Burnside. Yeah. That's, Mimi that's, Noop. Yeah. Mimi, Mimi there's Noop, a, there's sure. a, I mean, we we named five. We named five off, right? Yeah. Lisa 100%. Whitaker. Yeah. Lisa Whitaker, Lisa Whitaker. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Lisa Torres. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's it's rad that, you know, you have a part in this, you know? A huge it's, part. It's I just incredible. love this community, you know? I love this community so much, and I just love skateboarding and being a, a kid and just wanting to be a part of it, that if there's anything I could do to make others feel like a part of it when maybe there wasn't space for them, I just, it's all I want, you know? Yeah. I just, I love skateboarding. I just want to see it grow. It's I just amazing. want everyone yeah. to be a part of it. And we'll get into the, all the exposure stuff and what you're doing now in the last 12 years of um, doing all this stuff. But also, it's like you're also, you're from Poland originally, mm -hmm. but you didn't start skating in Poland. You started skating when you were out here. Yeah, so my my parents, my dad won a visa lottery that he entered as a joke. What? Okay. What? Wow. It's, it's a, such a crazy story. He's like, yeah, me and my college buddies, we entered a visa lottery to go to America as a joke. And then I guess like on the radio, he hears that he won. <laughs> and he was, he looked at my mom and he's like, well... I guess I gotta go to America. <laughs> I won the visa lottery. And I guess he came out here. The first thing he did was apply for my mom to go. And then, so they're both out there and we're at home uh, with my grandparents. And my mom goes to Disney World and she tells us this story. She goes, I saw Disney World and all I can think about was the rusty, rickety carnival that comes to our village in Nova Sarjina every year. Mm. And my three kids go on these like squeaky sw <laughs> swings and that's a carnival and I'm a Disney World. Like her heart broke in that moment. Mm. She's like, my kids have to experience this. Wow. And at the time I thought that my dad worked in America and we were gonna go visit him for summer vacation. So, we pack, we pack up. I'm like, oh, cool. Summer vacation in America. Like, I'm going to live in a jungle. I'm going to have a giant <laughs> what? parrot. I, I have no idea what I'm going to do. A okay. parrot? <laughs> I thought yeah. I was going to have a parrot. Like, a, like a pirate. I have no idea. <laughs> what mo what movies American are you American. watching? <laughs> I, mean. I know, right? I love it. <laughs> I was like seven. And for some reason, that was America to me, okay. you know? Oh, wait. Okay. So you're, you, were, you were seven years old when the, your dad had moved out to California. Or yeah, not uh, New Jersey. New Jersey, yeah. okay. But in, what, what was your thoughts on that? You're like, all right, Dad, see you later. I, like, did, I didn't know. Yeah. Jungles and parrots. That's yeah. I just thought. was like, yeah. my dad works in America. And we're going to go visit him. Like, you know, when yeah. you're young, your thoughts aren't that yeah. expansive. You don't think think into it. Yeah. And then, you know, we get, <laughs> we, we get off the plane in Newark. <laughs> and I just see like smokestacks and highways, and I'm like, where is the jungle? Where's, where, where's my parrot? Where's my parrot? No, yeah. seriously, that, I, that's one of the first things I asked about. I'm like, where's my parrot? <laughs> and, um, and we spend the summer in New Jersey, like in this like apartment complex, like not in the best part of Jersey, mm -hmm. and like. I don't understand anything. My family doesn't speak English. Well, my brother learned from Muzzy. So we looked at my brother, who's a little bit older than I am, to like get us around and help oh, us wow. <laughs> navigate the world. <laughs> but none of us understood the language yet. And after a whole summer, I look at my parents and I'm like, um, so school's gonna start. I'm really excited. When are we going home? And they just go, well, we thought you would try school here. I'm like, oh, I don't even speak English. How do you, how am I gonna do that? And on my first day of school, I had to equip myself with some, some form of English language that I learned from Nickelodeon. Okay. <laughs> and the teacher was going around asking everybody if they brought a lunch or if they're buying a lunch. And like the parents are there, all the kids are there. This is the first day of first grade. And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. I'm like, okay, she's asking the same question, phrased in the same way. Mm -hmm. I know it's about lunch and I know I brought a lunch. And like I memorized my answer. It was gonna be like a pop quiz, right? Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, when she gets to me, I'm just gonna say from home because that's where my lunch is from. Okay. And then she gets to me. 
and I guess she knew I didn't speak English. She like got down and she was trying to be sweet, but she rephrased the whole question. Oh, it threw you off. So I don't know what she she probably said. Did you bring a lunch, sweetie, or something? She didn't say from home or buying. Sure. Right? And then I just go from home, <laughs> <laughs> and the whole room just starts laughing, and I'm uh, like looking around. Uh, All the kids are laughing. My mom is like with the parents. She's laughing, and I'm like. <laughs> I want to go home. Yeah. Go home. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a That's the first day of school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's, I mean. It, you remember it to this day. That's, oh, how, yeah. that's how traumatizing that was, right? <laughs> right. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, just being in the in the states, it's it's huge. Sure, you know, yeah. sure, it's huge. And my parents picked up three kids and moved to a country where they didn't speak the language. Their education that they both had master's degrees didn't really translate. So mm. like, well, you can't even speak the language. So, mm. you know, and I just can't even believe their bravery in that moment. You right. know, right, yeah. right. That's that just to this day it just blows me away. They they're back in Poland now. I'll retire. Oh, they, okay, and, oh, okay. And oh, nice. How nice. long were how long were they here for? They lived here for twenty five years, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah, really. Oh, so they went back to retire. They were yeah. like, we're going to go back to the to the homeland and 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 kick it. Yeah. My dad, uh, he's in his sixties, and he decided he was going to build a house from scratch in how, Poland. How did that go? It's epic. It's going. Really? It's epic. It's still going, or oh, it, I've it, been there. They they had like he. <laughs> He like chopped down the trees. No he way. like built the house from the ground up. That's it's impressive. all done. It's all done. Wow. I went and visited them in March, and I just can't even believe it. You know, yeah. is this like a like a cabin type house, no. or did he like mill like the wood? A bunch of logs. And stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's how I know. Like I'm envisioning. What you're that. saying, like he cut down it's trees. Log, yeah. It's a log cabin. It's in a forest. Like so, he had oh. to raise the land. You know, so they got like a little forest surrounding it. They got like a little creek. But okay. I mean, that the house is like. You know, it's uh, you push a button, all the blinds come down. So oh. no, oh, it's we're not really like okay. It's like okay. legit off the grid, but like teched out. Yeah, yeah, I like it's teched it. out. My dad you get a parrot. You get a parrot. Right oh now? yeah, they got me some parakeets <laughs> eventually. Oh really? Yeah. What yeah. out in, out here or back? No, in New Jersey. Oh, okay. Those are my first friends in America. <laughs> so you. <laughs> So you, you really start, wanted like, you really wanted a bird. You I gotta did. start somewhere. <laughs> the parakeets didn't talk though. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah. It's Tom and Jerry. Tom, Tom and Jerry. And Jerry. Yes. Yeah, makes sense. Cat and a mouse. <laughs> well, Love Tom two birds. Because yeah, Tom and Jerry, you don't have to know the language mm -mm. to like enjoy the show. True. They're just running around oh, doing yeah, crazy right. antics. Yep. Yep. How how long did it take you to learn English? Like that you felt comfortable? You think? I ended up having to switch schools. And there was a school that wasn't too far from where I was that had a English as a second language teacher that spoke Polish. Oh, wow. So I did all my classes with her. I want to say up until like third or fourth grade. Mm. So, I mean. I mean, kids learn quick, right? You're yeah. immersed in and it. You're, you're, you're totally, you have no option, right? right. Yep. right. So I, I definitely got really lucky, you know, mm. um, it, with the timing of it, I think. Um, my oldest brother had a bit of a, a more challenging time. You know, you're in middle school and bullying. Oh, yeah. Slang. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Slang. New Jersey. That's when like, it really starts. Oh, yeah. It's rugged. Yeah. It's right, rugged out right. there. Pause. Pause podcast. Okay. I need to tell you guys that this episode is brought to us by Athletic Greens. Ooh, we love Athletic Greens. We do. This is gold in a box, right? Love this stuff. <laughs> With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and Kelly's favorite thing in the whole world, aptogens. I love there aptogens. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Well, not only that. Ooh, tell me, Drone. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs. No nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. Nothing budget, only nothing, buttery, right? Nothing budget, please. Yeah, yeah. But it also supports better sleep quality and recovery as well. Tons of people take multivitamins, but mm. it's important that you choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. And it's also better when you, you know, uh, not to have a full medicine cabinet full of, you know, supplements. Oh, man. You know, wait, you wait so I can get rid of all my supplements? Yeah, I was just over at Kelly's house the other day, opened the cup, I was hit with supplements. Get the trash can. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them in there. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with oh. your first purchase. All you have to do is just visit athleticgreens.com slash nine club. That's N-I-N-E-C-L-U-B. Again, athleticgreens.com slash nine club. Take ownership 
of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance today, there which is Let It Greens. <laughs> Take over your health now. Let's get into the skating part of this because like you started skating around like 12 years old mm -hmm. and like what really sparked that off? Like here's a little girl from Poland coming over here, barely speak English. And where's this the skateboard come into play? So it was at the time where skateboarding was really like visible, right? Not in terms of, I didn't see people skating around in New Jersey at the time, but on TV, Rocket Power. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Rocket Power was huge. All, like me and my little friends were super into it. And Tony had just landed the nine. You know, it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. We saw it everywhere, we played the video games. And so I was always, like I was interested in it and I appreciated it and sort of dabbled. But the, the moment that really kind of made me immediately become obsessed with it, we, uh, we got the opportunity to go see the X Games live because they came to Philadelphia. Ooh. And my parents, I guess, were super into the X Games as well. And they're like, okay, let's go to Philly and, and check it out. And we, uh, we were going to watch Best Trick Vert, mm -hmm. and we're waiting for it to start. And me and my friend Nicole, who also was getting into skating at the time, we were just wandering around the arena like, oh, let's like, go explore while we wait. And then we see like another vert ramp off in the distance. We're like, oh, there, there are people skating it. And we get closer, we realize it's like girls and women. And we look at each other like, what? <laughs> We're just pushed over to the side. Yeah, like. just off to the side, <laughs> okay. not televised. Like no one's even announcing, oh my but it was gosh. a demo. There it was, was a, a demo. Oh, okay, cool. demo. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, and then we realize that one of the girls skating is 12. She's just like us, but she's doing these big airs. She's doing like inverts, all this stuff. Lindsay Adams, Hawkins, Pastrana, Pastrana now. now yeah. Yeah. And that just opened our minds. You know, it's interesting because I know it's like, it's a different world now, but you know, you can't, you can't be what you can't see. Mm -hmm. So that moment in seeing just these women rip, Carabeth Burnside was there, Mimi Noop was there. And it's just like this whole world opened up in that moment. I mean, I liked skateboarding before that. It was interesting, but I was obsessed from that moment on. It's sure. all I wanted to do. I was like, I just want to be just like Lindsey Adams Hawkins Pastrana. Pastrana. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And I think before, I mean, you're totally right. I mean, that's why we mentioned before is like all the, the women that came before all these girls now mm -hmm. is like, the, you're the reason why, right? Yeah. It's like they, they saw you. And I think it's with every, everything, right? It's For like- sure race gender any anything you can identify with like that's that's all that's everything that, yeah. that's everything and i mean skateboarding was pretty one-dimensional for a while mm. yeah. you know yeah. yeah well what year is this let's uh, like that x games you early went to. 2000 so. when i was growing up i mean i'm sure dubs and and kelly too like there was no there was no women skaters like i didn't see you know there were maybe in the videos like yeah. the the yeah. uh world industries I'm, I'm spacing on the name. She skated for World Industries. Oh, uh, Jamie Race. No, 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 no. Sasha. Before Sasha. 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 Oh. Sasha. But the, and there was, a, I mean, a Peggy with the uh, Peggy Oki. The, yes. The Z Boys. But 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 in where I it was very rare. It was rare. Sure. It was rare. I never it's, saw. A, I think a, a, it's a, interesting a woman skate. because I think I think there were probably more than we know. Mm -hmm. But it almost felt like we had to be hidden you like know like we couldn't bit, go yeah. join the, mm. the session or like be a part of the crew or i mean who would have put us in a video you know we just i don't know what it was maybe just the general vibe of skateboarding it, it just if we didn't feel invited or welcomed right. mm. and i remember i remember at that age like showing up to middle school wearing like a, a spitfire shirt and like people would just be like you're such a poser and I just thought, like, <laughs> yeah. based on what? Yeah. I do skate, you know? Yeah. And then I would, like, try to go skate with those kids. And this isn't, like, on all of skateboarding, but this right. is, like, the, the what I experienced. Sure. Yeah. I would try to go skate with those guys, and, like, they just weren't very inviting. Mm. And then I was like, well, maybe, like, I got to get good, and then they'll want to skate with me. And then I, 
I realized, I was like, all right, none of them can do tray flips. I'm going to learn tray flips. That's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was in my brain somehow. Okay. And then, so I learned it and I <laughs> bring my little skateboard to school, yes. right? Yes. And after school, like, do my tray flip. And then they go, you must secretly be a dude. And I'm like. <laughs> what? Wow. Oh, just reverse it on like, you, like yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't win. Can't yeah, win. You can't win. I just wanted. Oh I just God. wanted to be a part of this. Sure. This community, you know. So, so where yeah. would you go to to skate then, if if you were kind of not <laughs> <laughs> like where are we skating Except at? Yeah. yeah. So my friend Nicole, who I said we saw the X Games together, we mm -hmm. would skate together, and um, there weren't really parks there at the time. There were a couple spots that we skated. There was mostly this like this one curb. And this is New Jersey. This is not like the beautiful <laughs> yeah. red curbs from out here. Mm. Like even the yellow curbs out there don't grind and the ground is gritty. So we would like, we'd steal all the, all the candles from the house, like yeah. layers of wax. But then if like the sun was too intense, it just melt off. Yeah. So it, it was like we tended to the curb. Sure. Yeah. You know, sure. it was like a plant. Curb maintenance. Yeah. Curb yeah. maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. So we skated like one curb um, and a manhole covers. You know? Oh, that's like the best first obstacle to skate ever. Got all the over yeah, there. Yeah, Loved yeah. it. Yeah, that was right. like my favorite. That's perfect. Because even if you don't clear it, you're still good. Exactly. Yeah, it's perfect. Exactly. Yeah. You and that was did. like your caliber. <laughs> like, yeah, I did learn 180s, but now I did it over the manhole. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I swear, that's, I, I, from what I can remember, is that was the first gap that I ever did. Right. Yeah, it's like, the yeah. Even, was, even like a... a, a uh, you know, like a discoloration in the the oh, pavement yeah. or something. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you use that as like yeah, you know they, they had made like a little hole or something and repaired That's a, a pipe. Mm -hmm. That's a mani pad too, right? Just pop oh, yeah. the wheel up. What about what about skate videos at that time? Were you watching skate videos or what was the first video you saw? Uh, the first video I saw was Rodney Mullen. Um, First day one? one, round two. Mm. Ooh, that's a good round one. Round two. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my friends watched that like every freaking day. Every day. It was so great. Yeah. And like I still remember all the music. And <laughs> yes. there was like some guy with a fanny pack in the background. I still remember all these little details. Guy you know? with a fanny pack in the back. Here's a Rodney versus Day One three or whatever. What a great video, man. Two. Yeah, it was so good. And then the first video I ever owned was... Um, one step beyond. Ooh. Ooh, Roger made that one. Yeah, he oh, yeah. Or he, he filmed the most of it. Yeah, Josh Stewart made it. Yeah, Dude, yeah, thank you. That that video, just That's VHS, a, you know, all oh, worn yeah. out. You're yeah. rewinding yeah. it so many times. And you got to fix the tracking. You know, oh, how the little it tracking all, like, button. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was there a skateboarder that stuck out to you back then? Like one of your favorites? One of my favorites from back then. Like like watching through videos or magazines because you said you saw Lindsay at the skating the mm -hmm. ramp, but like anyone through videos that stood out to you? Well, one step beyond Tony's part. Okay, Tony Hawk. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. Were you I, like? Were you initially when you first started skating? Were you like attracted to skating like vert ramps or transition or street or both? I was just really attracted to skateboarding. Yeah. There weren't um, a lot of transition opportunities where I lived at the time. Uh -huh. So you know, I just. I loved all of it, but to this day, like Tony Hawk and Day One Song, yeah. like <laughs> favorites, complete polar opposites. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say, but yeah, yeah. Lo just love watching it. Yeah. And like I said, Day One's Day One's whole oh. part in that yeah. video. I, I, I think both parts. of them are still like as still. good as they were. They definitely the are. Yeah. still just giving and giving and giving to skateboarding. You know. Yes, so how did you get into like vert skating? So the, one day, my parents once again. They, they come home and they're like, Amelia, we found a skate park. And I'm like, you guys don't even know what a skate park is. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? They're like, it's by Ikea. Ooh, what? <laughs> what? Let's go, let's <laughs> go get a, a little, there little was a secret. They're Ooh. like, get in the car. And I'm like, okay. We get in the car. We drive. It's like this big sports complex. It's called Rexplex. You go in there. There's like a basketball court and like a roller hockey thing and like an arcade. And then sure enough, there's a skate park. There's a street course, a mini ramp and a vert ramp. Wow. Amazing. And I couldn't even believe it. Like my parents just f like stumbled upon this and I just wanted to like exist there basically. Sure. But uh, going there and seeing Elliot Sloan as a little kid. Wow. Amazing. Like, kickflip indies, just big airs, all that, you know? 
and the Lopez brothers skated there at the time, and it, there was a little scene, okay. you know, there was a little scene. Uh, and I realized I was terrified of heights. Fur <laughs> wow. ramp is pretty, I mean, yeah, it's big. Yeah. So yeah. I get up on the thing. I haven't even dropped into anything at this point, but I get up there. <laughs> I won't, I can't even like go to the edge. I'm like, yeah, this is really cool. I want to do this, but I don't know how. <laughs> like, yeah. I was just paralyzed, but I was just so fascinated by it. So I always really loved vert. But like, I just wanted to skate. Mm. I didn't care what it was or where it was or who it was. Like, I just, I just wanted to go skate. So yeah, did you just yeah, start yeah. to like pump the ramp and mm -hmm. just become familiar with I it? Didn't, Cause I Because dropping in is the biggest part, right? Huge. It's like I learned how to rock to fakie before I could drop in. I can, mm. I could see that. Though. Yeah, yes, pumping I've up never, and down, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you could see it right there. It's like I'm almost there. Yeah, and then you kind of learn like a little tail tap sort of, mm. you know? Right. Don't not all the way up because yep. it's a vert ramp, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of... Was there a lot of people there? So indoor skate parks in New Jersey were, they were pretty, uh, pretty densely packed. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. A lot, like rollerblading yeah. was really big at the time. So it was mostly um, like rollerbladers yeah. and some skateboarders. But I, I just remember as a kid, like getting into skateboarding is a really weird thing for a kid. Like, because there's so many, like you see a lot of kids that are older than you and whoever, and they're all like, they have the routine down and they have the etiquette, but you don't know anything. So it's initially so hard to start skating in front of people. You know what I mean? So to And then everyone's skating like a mini ramp. And mm -hmm. to just go from the middle and start pumping, you have to go when like no one's looking, right? Yeah. yeah. That's a <laughs> well, the, the thing about like the vert ramp specifically, yeah. unless there was like a session, people weren't really skating. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I could just pump, pump oh, on yeah. that thing all day. But yeah, trying to get on the mini ramp and like learn how to drop in, then you're standing there like frozen with fear. And there's like a big session and it's like people are like what are you doing dude just, yeah just do it yeah, yeah i definitely think that like if there's a ramp or a park involved that's it's definitely harder than yeah. just going to a street spot and yeah. like skating with everybody for sure was there yeah. any like helpful people like you know trying to you know help you along the process yeah did elliot sloan give you some tips what's going on <laughs> elliot was very reserved at the time so i don't think he and i even spoke very much all right uh but there was a kid jesse mcdonald who was like the vert superstar of of that spot and he was trying so hard to get me to drop in hmm. and i was like so scared this was like after i'd already like learned some stuff on the mini ramp you know like 13 14 now what are yeah, we talking 14 okay. like 14 okay. and i there's a big vert session i'm on top of the vert ramp i'm like shaking i'm like this is what i want to do with my life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i gotta i gotta drop right. in right and i i do it i like go fall straight to the shoulder a couple times but then i get up and just jello legs like mm. wobble out of it. And I'm like, my heart's racing, I'm so pumped. And I run back to the top and little Jesse McDonald is like, that was good, that was good. Try to bend your knees a little more, you won't get the wobbles. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then I get back up and for some reason, instead of bending my knees, I lean back. I lean oh. back, I fold my ankle, oh. I just straight fold it. And I hear, like, there was a crowd for some reason. I guess people liked watching the, the vert mm -hmm. um, sessions. I hear someone go, she broke her ankle. And I'm thinking, like, no, no, no way. Oh, and I'm, no. like, no. just trying to crawl off the vert. I'm like, oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> like, let me just get out of here. And I'm, like, sitting on the side of the ramp. Dude, my ankle was done. And mm -hmm. this was, like, at a time, like, my parents would leave me at the park because that's, mm -hmm. that's where I wanted to be. And they'd go do their little shopping sure, or whatever, sure. pick them back up. And I was just sitting at the side of the ramp, and I didn't know what to do. Was it broken? It was so broken, oh, dude. Wow. Like, it was, was it like, like was no, it like dislocated? No, but it was like I had to get surgery. Oh, oh man. that yeah, young, you gotta, and nobody's broken. helping you. Nobody's coming They're over. They're trying, your but ankles, I'm, I'm oh. trying to be tough. Like, I want to be a skate. I'm trying. I'm like, I know, I'm but fine. still, I would be like, <laughs> like if somebody help me. My ankles eventually, falling off. Eventually, I was okay. like, okay, I think I should go to the EMT. That sounds like a thing I should do. And then I like I like limp over or like I'm on my border. I don't even know. But I go, excuse me, mm. <laughs> excuse me. I think something's wrong with my ankle. And then he saw it and he knew. And he was like, from that moment on, he just like sat me in a chair and tried to tell me funny stories as we waited for my parents. Oh my gosh. And this was like before cell phone. God, I feel so old. <laughs> Trust like, me. Hey, we were all yeah. we were all there. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. We so, had pagers at that. Probably didn't look at a, at a Thomas <laughs> guide to figure gotta, out where the park was. You got to go so, to the pay phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he has a phone in his office. You know, my parents don't have a a pager 
a beeper or his cell phone. <laughs> so he's calling my house, leaving messages. My parents are out and about, and they call like it was a couple hours. Mm-hmm. It's not on them. It's just like it was a situation. That's what right? happened here? And and they they talk to the guy and they race over to get me, and we get in the car and like the first thing they say is. Never skateboarding again. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and like from them, I was so tough until that moment. I just like bawling. I'm just mm-hmm. crying. I'm like, but I, j- I just learned to drop the defer. Like, <laughs> kind of. Like, you folded your. No, no I did it. You, you, you did, did it. You did it. Okay, okay, oh, okay. you did do it. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know why I messed up so badly the second time, but. <laughs> so, I learned like. The, we were an immigrant family, dude. We didn't have health insurance. Oh. I had to go get freaking surgery on my ankle. That must cost. Yeah, yeah. what did decent it decent amount? I heard the number fourteen thousand, but oh, I don't know if that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know? That's a, especially back then. Yeah, back then. Dude. Back you know? then with that amount of money. What what dude. did they do yeah. to your ankle? Did they put a rod in they there? They put or a pin in there. Okay. It's still in there. Still in there. Mm-hmm. It's been super solid. Like uh, Yeah, I was gonna say because sometimes they remove the pins after a certain amount of time. I asked about them. They're like do you, is there a problem? I'm like, no. Oh, I'm so like, you can no. barely, you don't even yeah. know no. the difference. If there's a problem, okay. then yeah, get it out. But if sure. you have yeah. no problem. No, and the ligaments are like golden, you know? Hey. It's, it's got extra stability. Yeah. yeah. It's great. <laughs> Working out. So it worked out in the long run, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like, you know, you're a kid, you heal fast. So yeah. I, I feel like right after I got out of the castle, I was like, mom, can you take me to Rexplex? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But and they, they knew at that point, like. You were hooked. Uh, I was just at home watching skate videos, like crying about not being able to go skate. And like in my household, school was number one, right? And I came home with good grades all the time. So they knew like. They they, couldn't say anything. They couldn't say anything. And they saw like. Yeah, your heart was in it. My heart was in it. Coming home with D's and F's, that might be another story, right? Yeah. For a a 15 year old. Yeah, no, it was kind of like. Oh yeah, nice report card. But what's up with the B plus? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my god, oh, I'd be ecstatic if A's. I got a C. <laughs> I think that's if, tr- I could, if I'm yeah. passing. If I got a C average, I'm good. The true testament of like wanting to be a skater. If you get that injury at a young age and you get through it and still want to skate, that shows that like that's huge. Like I think your parents were like, oh okay. Well, to that point, it. how many people do you meet on the streets? Like I used to skate, but I used to get hurt, man. I just exactly. Gave it up. Yeah, you know? exactly. Everyone says that. I tried to skate once. I fell off. Yeah. And I go, and then what happened? Yeah. Like, Never did it again. They didn't have the drive. Yeah. But that's, you know. I mean, that's the beauty of they skateboarding, made the right? Decision. Yeah. We get back up. So not too long afterwards, if I'm correct here, I mean, you had, you had a couple of little sponsors here and there, maybe like a board sponsor. They were paying you like a hundred bucks a month or something. Well, when? I don't know. <laughs> I, Dude, I made a sponsor oh, me video. I sent it like, I, so. Well, you I eventually to, ended up on Scarecrow. Eventually. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Who did you send your, who did you send your tape to though? Just everyone? I, like, I, no, not to everyone. I sent it to Etnies. Okay. Didn't hear anything back. I sent it to Birdhouse. Didn't hear anything back. I sent it to Flip. Didn't wow. hear anything back. My and I think my friend like somehow found Ed Templeton's email, and she sent it to Ed Templeton. I was like, how did? And she got an email back. She goes, look. And I'm living in Maine at this time, so there's a little bit of a transition. Uh-huh. And she's like, look, Ed Templeton responded. He said you should keep skating, and I was like. <laughs> like just so moved yeah uh but i i eventually got on scarecrow like years later uh i i ended up going to like a boarding school in maine oh, okay. because i like what like i said education was number one mm-hmm. in my family and i was really lucky to go to a program called new jersey seeds which Required a lot more schooling during middle school, like school on Saturday, school over the summers. But they would get you a scholarship to go to like a good private high school. Mm. And that turned out to be a boarding school <laughs> in Maine. Oh, my God. But the coolest thing is <laughs> there was a teacher there who skated, Dave Bean. Wow. And he had a freaking two-foot mini ramp in his garage. In his garage. In his garage. At boarding school? At boarding school. <laughs> what? I know. You can't, you can't make this stuff yeah. up. Like, yeah. So I like. Dave Bean. Straight yeah, up. seriously. Skateboarding so, school. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. He, he ended up like building a whole skate park inside of their like sports 
facility. That's awesome. Uh, but essentially, I would just like the whole winter, I'd be like, Mr. Bean, can I skate your mini ramp in your garage? <laughs> Mr. Bean. <laughs> totally meant to best. be, though. Jeez, it was like, meant to yeah. be. It was meant to be. And he's the one that convinced me that I should like go out to California to do some contests and stuff. He's like, there's, there's a whole women's scene out there. Mm. And I'm just thinking, I'm like... What do you? No one even answered my sponsor me. They, yeah, like, how spend money go to California? Like, what are you even talking about? And wait, how are you filming sponsor me tapes at boarding school in Maine? Just at yeah, like Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean's house. Mr. Bean <laughs> got his camcorder out. <laughs> Cam well, yeah, the, you had these stretches of time where you could like you, you had longer vacations, right? So I'd go to New Jersey over the summer. The summer was a little longer. The spring break was a little longer. Winter break was a little longer. And my friend Nicole, shout out back to my friend Nicole, she's sitting at the bottom of a four stair. Mm. I'm trying to kickflip it for so long. And it's like cold. <laughs> I got my gloves on. Like yeah. we shoveled the snow off the thing. <laughs> Damn, so you had to like after, like when you were out of boarding school to go back home is when you got all the filming done. Um, I filmed a little bit like at the indoor parks near there. Rye yeah. Airfield was the closest one, which is two and a half hours away. Jeez. Mm. Great park. Gosh. Such oh, a great you been park. there, Raj? He's yeah, like this voice out of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You don't know who's talking. At yeah, you're like, wait, did you say that? So, are you good? So, do you make it out to California at this point? So, I make it out to California. Um, first, there were some contests in Oregon called the Oregon Trifecta, and I went to those. Dave Bean came with me because he convinced me. He's like, you should really do these, and. He was just really good at like connecting with people and I'm over there, I'm skating with my headphones. Like I don't know anybody. Like uh -huh. I feel, I hardly feel like I belong there, you know? And then I end up like winning this contest, the Oregon Trifecta, and like, it was like 2007 at this point. And I'm like confused about how I won, but I'm like stoked to be there. And there's like other girls and women that skate. And this was like mostly like transition. So it was like, mm. you go to like Lincoln City, if you've ever skated that park, it's just mm -hmm. this like the most raw, like DIY-ish mm -hmm. park out in Oregon. And it's like three parks over three days. And through this process, essentially, we run into Jim Gray. And Dave Bean starts talking with Jim Gray, and he's like, Yeah, you should really, you should really sponsor Amelia. So Jim Gray, bless his soul, sending boards all the way out to Maine from here. Scarecrow nice. boards. Scarecrow boards. Wow. Wow. Okay. So rad. So that was kind of your first legitimate sponsor yeah scarecrow scarecrow and then what happened after scarecrow because eventually scarecrow mm -hmm. went out of business so scarecrow went out of business um i'm about to finish a uh, high school in maine and i tell my mom i think i'm gonna take some time off and just go skateboarding in california oh wow mm -hmm. she how did she re yeah <laughs> what, how did she react to that she reality checked me so hard she just goes okay so you're gonna take a gap year between college? I'm like, well, yeah. She's like, well, California's expensive. How are you gonna pay for rent, food? I'm like, I'll, I'll get a job. She goes, how many hours do you think you're gonna have to work in order to pay for your rent and your food to be living by yourself in California? You think you're gonna have time to go skateboarding? I just start thinking about it. I'm like, oh man, she's really onto something. Yeah. She's making some sense here. I mean, she's a e master's in economics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Failed to mention that, but yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So she's, she's, real she's with it. Okay. Yeah, she's with it. Gotcha. And I just, I got this idea in my head. I'm like, well, maybe I'll try really hard in school. I'll get a scholarship to a college in California. Mm. And then I'll live in California and go to school and skate. <laughs> and I just... I don't know how that worked, dude. Oh, you just thought about it and did I it. I just thought about it and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm just going to try real hard at school and, you know, skate when I can. And uh, I, I, I made like a map of colleges that I was looking at and they were all based on like proximity to skate parks that I wanted to skate. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Amazing. What was the so skate that park that sick. you what, what, you went to USC eventually, right? I went to USC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, perfect. What amazing. park? What park was around USC at that at that time? I'm it's trying to think. Still too far. Which? I would go to Culver City Park. Ah, I like that park a okay. lot. But honestly, I made the drive down to uh, Orange to skate the Combi, mm. skate the Vans Park oh. down there. Okay. And and then there weren't. I still really was attracted to Vert, so I would drive down 
to San Diego like twice a week. I made all my classes so they're in the morning. I'm like, okay, if I get out of class at 12.30, I get in my car by 12.45, mm-hmm. <laughs> I can make it down. <laughs> <laughs> I can make it Planning down that house. Real, real, yeah, yeah. Dude, that's real shit. Real yeah. shit. That's yeah. totally. I would do the same thing from from where I'm from. Yeah, you just get out of school and you immediately book it to wherever wherever you want to go. I mean, still, exactly. that's a, yeah, that's yeah. a drive yeah. though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, but if it's important, you ain't even really tripping off that. That's just like you know the little middle piece to get to where you want to go. You're not even thinking if, about yeah. the drive, dude. You're just no. like, I'm I'm going to skate. It doesn't even matter how long it is. At the time, it didn't feel like anything because before you're living on the East Coast. All the vert ramps are like three hours away anyway, but you don't have a car. Your parents aren't going to take mm. you or it's like snowing outside, you yeah, know? So you're true. like, well, I have a car and it's right there and it's sunny out all the time. Like, Did you ever crazy. skate USC? Because there's yes. like spots I got there. kicked out, dude. I was living in the dorm <laughs> and I saw these local kids like skating like a force there. I'm like, oh, I'm going to join the, just hop in on the sash, like, yeah. say hi to everyone. I start skating with them. Campus security rolls up. And like they got their little lights on, like you can't skate here, and, and they follow us off campus. I'm like, but I live, I live right there. That's my dorm. Uh, they didn't believe me. Really? Nah, they didn't believe me. I got kicked. Just go skate around and then come back. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I never th- getting kicked out of your own school when you live there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, show them the credentials. Like, yeah, hey, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. Sure I don't even know what you're talking about. Got, got, yeah, here's my keys. Pulls out a badge. Board, like, yeah. Yeah. You guys can carry on. <laughs> Gosh. I'm good. I'm good. But so those are pretty two significant places. The combi pool mm-hmm. at Vans is pretty significant for mm-hmm. a couple reasons in your life. Yes. It's where you met Alec Beck, That's your husband. And mm-hmm. he proposed to you there too. It's beautiful. Which so is cool. crazy. <laughs> Coming full circle. <laughs> we, yeah. we got the video here. So That's you, so you, were, you were at so, the contest doing so, a demo, right? No, I was supposed like... Okay, so every year I try to get VIP passes to sit next to the coping because I want to hear the sound of the coping and feel it and all that. Mm-hmm. And I go, Alec, Alec, they want to interview me during halftime, so we got VIP passes and we're going to sit on the deck. And he's over there like, wow, honey, thanks. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Meanwhile, thanks. he's like, I got this all. He's like, I, I, I did he's all like this. scheming this whole thing. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm just talking over here. Don't even know what I'm saying. He's asking me some questions about women skateboarding. Mm-hmm. And I just have no idea what's going on. But the whole time, like, people were coming up to me like, hey, are you good? Are you okay? Are you com-? Like, remember, your interview is going to be on that spot over there. And I'm like, oh, I got oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not thinking anything. No. Of it, yeah. I'm just like, wow, everyone's yeah. being like a little extra nice. Right. <laughs> what year was this? This was, was it 2015? 2016. We got married in 2018. This was in 2017. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we were engaged for a year. So. Wow. And you met him there mm-hmm. at the at the Vans Park. Yep, our eyes met across the bowl, across the shallow end. <laughs> you're, you're both gonna drop in. And you both looked at each other. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you go first. You're like, you go first. You're like, no, you. No, that's I mean, kind of how it went. <laughs> that's amazing. I was like, I because I was so used to like skating alone in New Jersey. I was so like programmed to skate with headphones, which I know isn't cool. Grosso gave me a ton of slack about that. Don't worry. Um, but Alex standing next to me in the shower, and he goes, what are you listening to? And I'm, li- I'm listening to that song, like, Holding Out for a Hero, Bonnie Tyler. Okay. Holding out for a hero. Exactly. Oh, here comes Dove's beautiful voice. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's got to be strong. <laughs> it becomes yeah, yeah. a copyright, dude. <laughs> I know, I know. You're too good. I think it just like it. You're so too good. good. You're too good. Oh, he made me that necklace out of the tiles from the combi, so that's what I'm talking about. Cause, and then I'm like, wait, wait, wait. How long have you been dating at this point? We were dating for five years. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. There Which, he is. He's like, hey. He knows what he, he's like. I didn't, I was like, why is, okay, why is he wearing knee pads? And mm-hmm. then I was like, why is he wearing Vans? I was so confused because it was like a girl's demo. And I was like, is Alec about to barge the demo while like we're trying to do this oh. interview? <laughs> That's amazing. And and like, No, he was about to slide up in uh, <laughs> up onto the deck. That's why. I guess that he was practicing this like the night before. Crazy combi practice. Like uh-huh. everyone's like crushing it, snake session. And he's practicing this where he's dropping in and then he does this knee slide. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sick oh my pretty, gosh dude. pretty epic dude 
That wow. is so cool. Especially like you had cool. no idea. I had no, actually on the drive there, like we had all these trips leading up to it. And I was just like so hoping he was going to propose because mm. he's the best. Like who is what I yeah, want to spend right. my life with? Come on, he's beautiful. And uh, I, I was thinking on the drive down, we had all these trips. I was like, oh, well, he didn't propose in Hawaii and he didn't propose in Washington. Like, oh, maybe no, it's he just saved nervous. it for the combi. Going down the, going down the line here. <laughs> he saved it for the combi. Maybe today's the day. <laughs> no, we're going down to like a skateboarding contest. Yeah, and in yeah, my yeah. head, I'm like, man, I'm like, maybe he's just not going to propose. Maybe it's not going to. Like, Did you guys not, had talked about it beforehand? Or? We like, in a way, had like mm, talked about okay. being together forever, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So. I think he he knew I was gonna say yes, like right. But he was trying to find the right time. And he hey, was, that was the he's most, a really thoughtful you guys had, person. Yeah, yeah. you guys Very had like thoughtful. celebrated your your anniversaries there, and mm-hmm. so so it does. It was a special. Oh yeah, it made it a special, special place. It was special. And he made you the little necklace and everything. You he's know? just the best. And we got to shout out to Alec Beck for sure because I mean I've 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 known Alec Beck for a long time and he has been instrumental in a lot of these skate parks that are being built the 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 stoner park yes. in west los angeles and even getting the westlake courthouse legalized for skateboarding and now that he's working at uh tony hawk foundation formerly known as a tony hawk foundation it's now the skate park foundation right skate, skate park? park project skate, skate park project yeah. so he i mean we almost got a power couple here you know behind yeah, the scenes in skateboarding yeah, like yeah, yeah you guys are doing amazing stuff so shout Definitely. out to Alec Beck. For Seriously, big he shout does out. he does so much for the community, and he freaking rips. Yeah. Like, have you seen his birdhouse part? That it's no joke. Like he can skate anything. He could go do some like heel flip indies mm-hmm. on the vert ramp, and then go like do you know skate a manual pad manual, or uh, yeah. Yeah. Molly flip like totally. whatever. Yeah, everything, all versatile. Things. Yeah, versatile was, ATV. Mm-hmm. I was tripping. When I saw you at the uh, the Olympics, and mm. he was there with you, he was he, my coach. Yeah, that's what I was like, dude. How did you guys get here? Because they were so strict back then about people going to the Olympics. I'm like, how did you both rig it? Mm. You- well, I didn't rig it. I qualified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no. How did how did he? I mean, how did you rig? <laughs> Not speaking on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not speaking on that. <laughs> No, no, I know what you mean because like everybody wanted their people there, right? But it was yeah. COVID, so it was so hard. Yeah. But like. I was the only person from Poland to qualify because, like, the, in terms of park, there's not a lot of opportunities there for transition. There's some really good street skaters, mm-hmm. but every time, like, they were skating in a big contest, like, they would just trip out and, like, freeze. Oh. So I was the only skater from Poland who qualified for the Olympics. And then Men they were, and like, women? Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So there are a lot of like really good guys out there and some really good girls that, okay. you know, they tried. It's, it's a process, though. Sure. It's a process. Yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, that part was so good. Oh yeah, Shout out oh, to backside three sixty flip. Wait, so you hired him <laughs> as your coach? <laughs> well, they said the 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 guys who run the Polish team. Shout out Grzestow. <laughs> he he says, well, you know, we have Alec Beck written down as your coach. Like, you want him to go to Tokyo with you, right? And I'm like, yes, my, yes, that would be my, amazing. That's my husband. That's yeah. my husband. <laughs> so so we have room for a coach. So. We sign him up as the Poland skateboarding team coach, right? That's amazing. <laughs> but then when we get there, it's like, <laughs> it's so funny. He doesn't speak Polish. Yeah. He does he, nothing. Mm-mm. Well, we had to do like these like crowning ceremonies of like, you're an Olympian. Here's like all these like, you know, bureaucratic Olympics dudes. And there's like, you got to wear a whole outfit and Uh-oh. like say the whole like Olympic pledge or something. And it's all in Polish, and Alec is just like sitting there, like beaming. I think he needed to read something in Polish too, but I I, I helped him with that. <laughs> and it's funny because at the Olympics, it's like a it's like a international sports college. That's what it felt like. Mm. So everybody's like in a little dorm. Everybody's like in a little dorm room. They're all made out of like cardboard or something, <laughs> not or yeah, something. It's that, cool yeah. because they were trying to be. Um, like zero waste and like just use reusable materials to build a whole village and so we get there and I'm like roomed with all these like runners from Poland like I'm in, I go into my dorm and like they're all running they're, they're running they're, they're running, running. <laughs> running, they're running. <laughs> dorm to dorm they're running, running, running around and I'm like oh gosh and then I I go Alex in a separate he's like in the coach's quarters right in like a separate building on a separate floor and then I'm like uh, I'm just gonna go see what Alex 
little dorm is like. And so I go in there and I'm like, Alec, do you have a roommate in your dorm room? He goes, I, I haven't seen anyone. I'm like, can I be a roommate? Can I live here? Is that okay? Or is that a COVID thing? I, it was. I don't know if you could. It was so funny. Pa- sure, was what weird. did they say? Pa- patronize <clears throat> with the uh, the talent? I don't know. <laughs> 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 fraternize what did they say yeah I don't fraternize know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it was like you know these little cardboard beds right yeah, yeah I saw that they, were those comfortable they actually really were they were mm. yeah it was it was very surprising okay like once you like pulled back the covers you probably don't want to see that cause you're like, are you serious I'm yeah, sleeping on this it's literally cardboard right <laughs> but <laughs> I think Nigel I think posted like yeah what they a lot of people like. were posting yeah. that stuff yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. that was Car- we're, we came all this way we're gonna sleep on cardboard yeah. thank you mm. yeah uh, don't get me started on the Olympics, because I, I don't, <laughs> don't get me started on the Olympics. All right, let's start I don't it up. know. Let's start it up. I, we, we're opening oh, a whole. Uh, let's get the engine started. I don't. It, hopefully, it's they do a better job in Paris for this next one because <laughs> I was livid. Like a nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. I was. Yeah. I was livid, and I don't know. I, I, it's hard because. A lot of people were there. Were, were, they weren't seeing the broadcast that we were seeing. We weren't. They weren't seeing all this stuff. I mean, it was just. It was really. It was horrible. There was like a bunch of different broadcasts happening at once. There was. It was hard. Hard to find what you were looking for. Mm-hmm. They would cut away in the middle of people's runs, and I, I, I'm watching as a fan of skateboarding. I have nothing to do with the Olympics, and then not to mention all the women's judging and the scoring there i was you know it was very it was like insulting to me because here they are they're skating at the highest level they're in the olympics they're doing the highest level tricks and getting scored a four getting scored a five Mm. and i'm just like this is just this is brutal this is the most i'm having so much fun watching this but all of the it's just all the it's getting the wind's getting taken out of my sails here it's just, it was devastating to me. Yeah. How, I mean, how, how did you guys feel about it? The whole process was wild. Just, just to, let's take a step back though and think about like the context of it though. It's, they basically took skateboarding, mm-hmm. the sport that like also isn't a sport. It's just, <laughs> we're skaters. We just, it's our lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And most skaters didn't want to have anything to do with it but also like we don't have a choice, <laughs> right? We're in it, right? Yes. For, for good or bad. And the, the people that were put into organizing it have to go through all of the bureaucratic layers of what it is mm-hmm. to be an Olympic sport. And they have to take our, you know, wonderful, crazy community and <laughs> orchestrate it in a way that fits into this box of the Olympics. And the the approach that they took was like kind of reinventing the wheel. So, mm. you know, instead of like looking at the border and being like, wow, they have the, the scoring system and the points and the judging, they've got everything dialed, but we're gonna start over from we're scratch. Right. They're gonna redo it from, from nothing. And because of that, and because of like, I mean, it didn't even start like the Olympics was supposed to be in 2020. Sure. We didn't even hear about an event until like the end of 2018. And basically we were like the guinea pigs, like yeah. the first skaters <laughs> to go through this yeah. process. Sure. Yeah. And it was a big long process too. I mean, there was a event after event, qualifier after qualifier. It was like it was everybody, quick, people though. were burning yeah. out. It was quick though. It was quick, but yeah. then it was COVID. It yeah. was, there were so many layers, right? And so it's like on the one hand, like it was it was like the furthest thing from why i skate to be a part of right but on the other hand like you also got to think about the things that the people that are putting it on have to deal with like they're trying to they're some of the guys in there are skaters and they want it to work but they're answering to these to like the olympic rules and the layers and the bureau- bureaucracy yeah. like every time like i get explained the hierarchy of it I just feel bad for them because yeah. there's a lot. There's just so much, mm-hmm. right? But yeah, there were definitely things like we want to change or we didn't agree with and and some things like there was nothing we could do anything about. And, um, you know, the World Skate wanted to like listen to the skaters. So they, they made like an athlete commission and I've, uh, I've been part of it. You know, Manny Santiago was a part of it. Alexis Sablon was a part of it. 
but we would like try to have these meetings and be like, well, we don't agree with this and we don't agree with that. Like, let's make some change. And like a lot of the stuff was like set in stone already. So I was like, okay, I know that you're listening, but listening after the fact isn't, isn't super helpful because then we can't change it. Sure. But, but I understand that you also got all these layers that you got to deal with to get the stuff approved and the voting and the executive board and the IOC and the mm-hmm. NOC and the mm-hmm. NF and the whatever, all <laughs> yeah, NGB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ABD, the NBD. Yeah. Yeah. The NFTs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. NFL. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mostly, yeah. yeah. Mostly <laughs> acronyms. A lot of acronyms. Yeah. But essentially, some of the things that we wanted to change we were able to implement some of that after the fact gotcha, so okay. i remember one time <laughs> alexis and i were on the phone with some of the dudes from world skate who do skate and they they get it they're listening right mm-hmm. they, they can only do what they can do and we're like why why do the girls get a like such a low score and they're like well because they're judged against like what this trick scores like regardless of gender so i like they were trying to make it like a like gender doesn't matter kind of approach Mm -hmm. but it almost i i understand what they were trying to do but i don't think that it worked because it just made the girls look really bad that's how i felt well as a fan watching yeah i mean to the outside viewer that doesn't know about skateboarding it does because like now you're seeing fives you're not used to seeing that in general you're used to seeing when you're judged nines and tens, so now you're seeing fives. Well, and four, was, I was like, wow. out of ten, you're like, why is that a five? That That's even, insane. That should, exactly. yeah. So I understand that they yeah. were they were trying to communicate like what this what X caliber of skateboarding looks like to the everyday human who doesn't understand skateboarding. Like they're gonna be like, <laughs> oh, kickflip front board is a three point two. Mm. Yeah, and then like whoever from. Azerbaijan's like, oh, okay, if I learn that one day, I'll get a 3.2. I've never skateboarded before. I don't know, what, whatever it is. Sure. Yeah. They're just trying to like make skateboarding understandable. But skateboarding is dynamic, mm-hmm. right? It's yeah. ever-changing. Like that, that score is not going to be the same regardless of- Next year, of, it's going to be a different yeah, score. Next, yeah. next yeah, yeah. contest. Because yeah, 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 everybody yeah, exactly. comes in hot every contest. So yeah. like regardless of like whether you're competing against other women or other men or non-binary individuals, like- you're competing against them. You're not competing with all of skateboarding of all time and judged against every skateboarding trick that's ever been done Yeah, because it's never going to stop, right? It's a good so, way of looking at it, yeah. Definitely. So we we made a big we made a big fuss about it after okay. after Tokyo. And I was like, "Listen, guys, I we totally get what you're trying to do and you're trying to make it like a gender neutral scoring, but it kind of comes off as like being disrespectful like these girls and women they're doing stuff no one in our community has ever done before right like the freaking front crook like oh Funa's front yeah. crook yeah. like Ten we've stairs. never seen that stairs. before in yeah. our community and I'm and watching you're giving it, it a freaking what Five, five or six five or something. Point two. Yeah. 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 It was you know? just it was devastating. Yeah. yeah. But the point is like it's it's I don't know. I mean in every other contest that you watch mm-hmm. You're scored within that group. You're scored against the people that you're skating with. Right. And I know that's like skateboard judging is also really hard. Like I would never want to do it. So stop asking me. I'm not <laughs> going to say yes. Yeah. It's it's hard, right? Because you have to be so aware of like what everybody's doing and it's changing all the time. So it's not like hating on any of the judges or or anything that anyone's trying to do because I know everyone's trying to just do skateboarding justice. For sure. But I think at the end of the day, you have to like acknowledge people that are like pushing the limits of the the community that we come from, and Definitely. and kind of acknowledging like some of these moments, they're like kind of low key historical moments, and you're keeping them real low key exactly. by giving them a low score. Totally. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's interesting. That that's an interesting way to think about it for sure. Um, hopefully they learn i mean obviously they're they're changing it right for this next olympics yes so it's 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 already been different for this cycle so they can't just change Mm. it mid-cycle right it's like i said it's a lot of layers like like the executive board has to vote on it the ioc the the, the, this is the thing that makes me mad it's like just put vert in the olympics oh you gotta wait for 2028 No, but just there, put a I, ramp I, I understand. I understand that that's part. That's, that's a lot, lot dude. They, I, they have I, to decide like four years in advance. I don't they got to get the listen, venue. Chris, they we'll get, let's get Tony Hawk's <laughs> ramp over there. Let's do this. Vert should have been the first thing in there. That's true. Like, no, but yeah. I feel like Vert kind of took a like Vert was kind of silent for a little while. I feel like mm. and they made a huge push in the last 
five, six years, I feel like, right? Yeah, just in time for the I Olympics. I mean, it's been going on the whole time. <laughs> but, it's been going, yeah. like, you know, we're at 12 years of exposure. We always have a vert contest. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, it's hard putting a vert ramp up somewhere because sometimes it gets really expensive. And sometimes, like, if everyone's focused on park skating or street skating, like, you don't know how many people you're going to get. But there's a community mm -hmm. of vert skaters all over the world. They're really pushing the limits. It's dynamic. It's fun to watch. And it's, it's fun to be a part of. And I know that there's a push for it, but I don't know whether enough has been done on the back end for it to work. I, it hasn't been decided yet, as far as I'm concerned, for LA, for sure. Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's going to be a demo. But yeah. What about mm. why Why wasn't Vert in there in the first place instead of, so instead this of is, Park? This, that's is the, this is the thing that breaks my heart, right? Uh -huh. Like, I feel guilty about this because I heard it on one of the IOC calls, like, I don't know, back in like 2015. 14 or 15 with Gary Ream and all those guys and Tony Hawk was on the call and uh and we asked and they said well we saw that there wasn't uh there weren't enough international women participants in vert and hmm. like my soul just broke I'm like ah, we do this event every year we always have vert sometimes the numbers are lower than others but it's been the longest running women's vert contest and we have girls from like 10, 12 different countries some years. And so, I, I mean, I'm doing all I can to try to make that happen. But I think it just wasn't seen enough on an international level. Oh. Like there's, there's vert attack that happens mm -hmm. in Sweden, which is also like a wonderful showcase of vert that is a bit more on the international side. But I think at the end of the day, there just have to be like more accessible vert ramps. Right? Yeah, okay. It was there so, more accessible park skating. So the park skating was a bit more accessible. There oh, were okay. like it was more likely for countries to have like some sort of concrete park mm. or even like a prefab park, you know, that qualified as park skating more so than something that was like a little bit out of reach like vert skating it makes mm. sense but that. at the same time vert is so fun to watch it's, and it's uh, anybody can watch it and kind of yeah. figure out what's going on well know? we also know that vert was kind of like i mean it's what you saw when you were a kid like you know what i mean That's like what what we I'm all I, I didn't skate vert but i saw it all the time yeah. saw it way more than park skating Actually, I had no yeah. access to park skating or, or vert ramp personally, <laughs> so, but I would watch vert. That was the one yeah. thing we all watched yeah. at the contest and everything. But there was this time where I felt like I saw more park skating for a while. I, yeah. I, I don't know, looking I at, think I don't know. So I think essentially what the park series did and what Ryan and the border did with that is they built something really dynamic that showcased transition skating that was mm -hmm. a bit more of a hybrid you know you can kind of draw from different types of skaters because like sometimes people that skate vert like they'll only skate vert but people that skate park like they probably also skate street like they're just kind of like it's more of like an all-terrain approach and i think that especially on the women's side there were just there was more access to that kind of skating and then the park series building that up and creating from like we skated in the first Van Doren Invitational in 2013. And then, like, you know, the border helped make that a huge global thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that helped a lot in terms of getting park into the Olympics. But essentially, with the Olympics, if you have, if you have a men's event, you need to have a women's event. And so they just weren't sure about Vert because there wasn't enough being built up at the time. And then by the time we were in Tokyo, like, it was COVID and... And like all these decisions about Paris were already made the year prior because the Olympics was delayed. Uh. So it was like too hard to try to get something in for Paris. Mm. So I feel like now's the time to try to get something yeah. in for LA like last minute. So I, I mean, I literally had people telling me like, I know you're doing exposure and it, like w you should probably just cut out the vert contest. I'm like, I will not. That's <laughs> no, will really? not. Really? Yeah. Because oh it's God. just, it's, it's really expensive. Oh, you know? I'm sure. I'm but, sure. But it's already embedded into your program of what you've been doing. So it's like, yeah. you know. Yeah. But well, we still have to bring. The of, course, of course. I mean, that's a big. Yeah, it's a big. It's yeah. a big yeah. undertaking for yeah. sure. I want to say thank you for like being the ad in those athlete things for the um for the world skate stuff. The Because that's a huge thing. And a lot of the skaters look to you for answers. And it's hard. I know it's hard for you to get answers like you're saying. But like, I know. I'm, are you still doing that? So. It's really funny. I I tried to take a step back this year 
because it, it is it is a little bit stressful. Like you want to see change, you care about it so much, and like sometimes when things don't change, you just get really frustrated. But then you have to like step back, think about the layers, and think about like, well, I don't know. Maybe it's just like there's just different personality types in skating to where they're in a Zoom meeting, they might not say anything, yeah. it, even mm -hmm. though they have all these feelings and they tell me all these things, you know. And I'm like, then say something at the mm -hmm. meeting. But then it gets quiet, and then I'm like, well, I guess I'm, I just feel like I get so annoying at those meetings. But I'm like, well, if no one's gonna say anything. Like you're, you're speaking on their behalf. Somebody's, <sighs> somebody's got to do it. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, like World Skate wants to listen. They can, they're listening as much as they can with the limitations that they have and the boxes that they have to check. Mm -hmm. And the skaters that do show up to those meetings, they try to speak to where they feel comfortable. But they also, you know, it's so personal. Like they're not like if a skater who just competed in Dubai or whatever says, oh, the judging sucked. Like they're <laughs> going to think like if a judge is on that call, they're like, I can't say anything. What do that judge thinks so I'm talking smack about right, them? And right. like so like I haven't been doing those contests. So we were on a judging call and I'm like, well, I heard that the judging <laughs> wasn't good. I love you guys. Renton, you're great. Like you're an amazing skateboarder. I'm just relaying information that I'm hearing and it's not yeah. personal. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so you it's like to. I'm just trying to like toe that line, but Tow it. <sighs> it's it's <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you for stepping up like that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. I, I, it, yeah. I've been on those meetings before, and sometimes it is hard to speak up. It's hey, there's hard. so many people, and then everyone, everybody cares. Yeah, everyone you know? cares, cares a lot. So much. Yeah, so and nobody feel, wants to be annoying, but I people feel intimidated on those calls. They're just like, I don't know whether or not to say, am I going to like if, it's, if insult somebody? Like, wh wh I don't know if it's not? like. Uh, I understand what you're saying, but like, oh, the judge, like, if you think there's a judge on there, that you're like, damn, totally insulting this judge right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But it's more of a crit like criticism, like constructive, constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to. yeah, but otherwise, um, nothing's gonna change. If you're just quiet. Yeah. So it's you know, it's moving in a in a direction of being more receptive to feedback. Like the scoring got changed, mm -hmm. so that's good. Yeah, you know, I think something everybody would like to see, especially in park. Like, <sighs> you show up to those parks, dude. You're in a practice with like 12 to 14 people oh, dude. in a bowl and you've got like 45 minutes. Mm. You drop in, three people drop in and you're like, okay, well, I guess it's not my run right now. Yeah. Imagine you know? trying to it's find- so gnarly. Yeah, yeah, 45 minutes to like barge it and hopefully you can just get like a couple runs in, but there's no like structured, hey, you go, okay, and then you go. Yeah. It's not like that, right? I, they've tried it that way because they agree like they know that it's something that needs to change but they're like well we're not we don't have we can't rent out the venue for like a month and have people stay here for a month just so they could practice but that's what people are doing anyway yeah like doing it on their own time now um but like when we were trying to go to tokyo they would tell us where the venue is and we'd show up like one time i'd show up and <laughs> i'm in sao paulo at the park i'm like cool i got here early i'm gonna get some runs the park's closed, just straight closed. Wouldn't let you in. They wouldn't let us skate. They were like, we're putting up bleachers. I'm like, the bleachers are over there. The bowl's over here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, nobody oh told us God. it was going to be closed. Oh, man. So it's like, but at the end of the day, like everybody's figuring it out as they go. Right. Right. So it's like, it's not, it's a huge undertaking, dude. Mm, <laughs> for sure. I think, yeah. I think you know, there, there were two sides. There was people that, hated it going into the Olympics and there are people that were for it. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that just seeing the job that they did, you know, afterwards, I was like, dude, this is so lame because here we are. We don't have anybody representing us. Uh, we, we have a lot of talented people in skateboarding. We have a lot of talented um, broadcasters. We have a lot of talented, like you said, the border has a scoring system. Like we are filled with talent and they didn't use 0% of it. And that's where I was really getting irked was because I'm like, they're not giving any background to like how we got here. They're not giving any background to the history. They're not giving any background to who these people are in the mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. And that was really devastating to me. I'm like, dude, how, who, this, this, somebody that, that's watching this has no idea, is still going to have no idea. Mm -hmm. And what good yeah. is that? But yeah. you're saying more of production level is what you mean. Totally. Okay, okay. Because yeah. I felt like the actual way they did it, other than the, the women's scoring, 
it was all when we were there it all went together well we're like oh this is actually coming together oh, pretty no, good I'm, I'm talking about as a fan watching but, this yeah, yeah, that's, they, that's where they need to get you yeah. probably did you even get to watch the a skateboard. I thing. had to watch Street yeah, yeah. from home. I had to watch the opening ceremony in the Street from home because it was COVID, so we can't go out for a long amount of time. You mean home is in like like as, uh, like Vista? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like from the couch. Oh yeah, like, because you were That's here. That's our opening ceremony. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. And then I like I walk in around the living room with my Polish flag. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we made it. Oh yeah, because you had to go like a week after. Yeah, because right. Park was at the end, That's right. and so we did watch it from home. And you know, if you could find like if you're lucky to find the the webcast with Paul was, Zitzer. Yeah, that's I couldn't, great. I, I couldn't yeah. find it. If you it, could find that, sure. that's great. We couldn't find it. I either. couldn't find it. Yeah. So, but I, you know, they're making some changes. I, I hope so. I, like I said, changes. I just yeah. want, I just want our community to be represented by us, you know, and sure. not have some guy that already that that announced the water polo game to come over and know a little bit about skateboarding and announce the skateboarding and be like, Steve yeah. Cabarero yeah. did that, and I'm like. What is going on? This is crazy. Chris, you would have pronounced it like that, probably. Well, I get a lot of names wrong, <laughs> but I would have definitely said Caballero. Caballero. What had he said? Sure. No, I'm just kidding. Probably. No, that does it, <laughs> but it does a disservice for us. Yeah. For sure. It's just yeah, yeah. disheartening. Yeah. But I, you know, I want to take, I want to give people context of why we're talking about the Olympics and stuff is because like you, with exposure and everything, because you, you started this exposure like 12 years ago, give or take, right? Mm -hmm. You've done it for 12 years. From what I heard is that you went to an X Games one time. You were going to be a, <laughs> you were going to be a, um, what do they call alternate. it? An alternate. Mm -hmm. And you were ready to go and everything. And they canceled the women's portion of it. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to televise it. They were just canceled it. And so you were, that kind of maybe sparked something in you to like, hey, let's get something going for, for women and let, let's, Let's if if they're not going to do it, we're going to do it. Yeah. So, so it kind of came full circle, right? I'm at USC. I'd like get to be on the alternate list for X Games. Like, I get to go down the street to the Staples Center, <laughs> skate in the practice with my freaking heroes who I saw skate at that X Games, like you know, the decade past or whatever. And and it, that was rad. And then for the following year, I was like, okay. I am going to, I'm going to drive down to San Diego as many times a week as I can. All my classes are in the morning, only twice a week. Like, I'm going to just learn some more tricks and try to get in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mimi Noop was deciding, uh, not deciding, she was working for the Action Sports Alliance, which they did a lot of beautiful things, including pushing for prize purse parity at the X Games. Okay. And Same purse as the men's and the women's. That's right, because right. It, there was a point, like, X Games was the only, like, it was the only thing. If you're a, a woman, a female, a girl, mm -hmm. a, a non-dude in skateboarding. <laughs> that Because you didn't see people getting sponsorships that actually were supportive, you know? Like, Marissa Del Santos was getting, like, free boards, right? And then, like, she was one of the best mm -hmm, <laughs> ever, yeah. you know? So, especially if you skated vert, that's, you know, your, your opportunity to get core sponsorships was even smaller so that this was like the apex of skateboarding uh for that community and it was like the they would give out an appearance fee to the guys just for showing up just for showing up that was like equivalent to the winner of like Ugh. women's vert or women's wow. street and even though it was like it's this rad opportunity like mimi noop drew Mearns, carabeth burnside like they all they all got in the room. They're like, this is like, this is unacceptable. So they, they boycotted the X Games like the day before the event or something. I and love then, that. They're so great. I love yeah. that. So rad. And it, it it worked out. Like they got prize, prize purse parity, which is just a beautiful thing because you're like, you're risking your main thing to try to push for what's right. Sure. Which is a really courageous thing to do. Definitely. Right. But with that said, I really wanted to just to skate in it and I remember showing my little video to Mimi, like, I learned all these bird tricks, right? <laughs> and she, she like, had to sit me down. And she was like, you know, we would have had you on the competitors list this year. Like, your video's great. But the women's vert was canceled. Oh. And I'm like, my little dream of, like, being just like Lindsay Adams Hawkins, <laughs> Travis yeah. Pastrana. Pastrana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, like, so crushed. And I don't know. I just couldn't just sit there and, and just sit with it you know i was like i had to do, i had to do something I, was sure. like, oh, I gotta do something right and 
at the time at in in college I was going to all these like gender and media studies courses and my professor Allison Trope like really inspired me to kind of like take a step forward and um I was working with her and I was working with this photographer Julian Bleeker and they were both like yeah maybe you should like make a documentary about all this growth in women skateboarding and how there's nothing for it mm. I'm like I don't even have a camera like I don't know how to edit like this was before like we all had like a super camera in our pockets right sure. so I I don't know I don't even know how it ended up working I just sent a bunch of emails to like Michael Burnett and whoever would listen right They're the right people yeah. Yeah, yeah and I met Brian Lynch at the skate park who like had a camera had all the equipment knew how to film and we just started interviewing people we started filming like Lizzie Armanto ripping. We started getting submissions from all over the world of these girls and women that ripped. And I made a count from some of my college courses. So I was getting college credits to basically make a documentary about go. women skateboarding. And I would be like in the little little lab at USC and I'd see Neftali Williams there. Oh, <laughs> sick. We went to school at the same time That's there. So and rad. he'd see me editing. I'd be like, check out this clip of Alyssa I just got. <laughs> and so it, it, kind of, it started as a college project. It started as from something of a place of like wanting to do something, it, it like channel this energy, mm -hmm. and um, ended up being underexposed. Yep. A a documentary about women skateboarding at that time. This was in 2012. This was in 2012. Yeah. By the time it came out, started it 2010. Okay. So it comes out in 2012. We uh, do a premiere at Agenda in Long Beach, and. After the fact, it, it, it kind of like got all these conversations going, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, people are talking about it. That was kind of the point, you know? And I ended up, after that, I was like, well, it's just like a documentary. It's kind of like complaining about stuff that should happen. <laughs> I was like, maybe I, maybe stuff should happen. <laughs> and I, I met uh, Leslie Cohen, who helped me co-found Exposure. Mm. And we sat down, and I'm like, but there's got to be if there's no women's events if that's what we're complaining about like let's just do an event sure sure you know so i think it was like i watched it by the way oh, i watched it was great yeah but i think wow. it it was like half complaining but it was half like but it was a lot of you were just pointing pointing stuff out right it was like legitimate for sure well you know you try to you, you try to be as neutral as you can be right you just want to capture people's perspectives and like show what's going on and right just illustrate um, kind of where we were at. <laughs> here's part of the, here's the, part of the documentary. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if anybody wants to check that out, I think it's like on Amazon and mm -hmm. Hulu maybe. I watched it on nice. YouTube. On YouTube? Well, I, I paid for it. So there you oh, go. Wow. Oh, YouTube there rentals. You go. <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't super involved in getting the distribution going. So I'm sorry. All good. I'm happy to pay for it. Happy to pay for it. I thought it was interesting. I thought there was a lot of good points in there, even with like, um, brands, how they were like portraying women skateboarding in like advertisements and stuff mm -hmm. like that and just have like modeling stuff and not really like having them skateboard in it and stuff yeah. like that. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's key because, you know, in a time before social media, like other other people are controlling what you're seeing, right? So if you as a young girl, you're only seeing like, other women portrayed as models and mm -hmm. not as skaters or like you know no one was making a little instagram clip to show you all the things that were possible you know just somewhere in the back of your mind like this idea of what it means to be a woman or a girl in, in the space of this planet mm -hmm. just starts to form and you you know it's, it's kind of limiting so the documentary comes out and i get approached by uh, philanthropist Armando and he says well what what like what's your next project and I'm like well I, I guess you know, I didn't really have a project but I'm like let's do an event like let's do an, a skateboarding event for for girls and women and he's like oh are you sure like events are like a lot of work I'm just thinking I'm like nah how hard can it be you call some judges right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever <laughs> and sure enough it, it was a lot of work but <laughs> the first one happened in 2012 and we have Alana Smith kind of like proved like our point of of the whole documentary like this is a community that needs to be nurtured if it's nurtured it will grow mm -hmm. you know it will grow and it'll expand and the progression will happen right and that's what we're seeing now that progression 100%. right 100% yeah. 
but it's got to be like support. You got to grow your little roots you start somewhere, before you yeah. sprout up. So first event just like proved our case because Alana Smith landed a McTwist. We'd never seen that in competition in the you know non-traditional skate community before. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was a big moment. It wasn't like a million people there, you know. Our first event, we only had 34 competitors. But just seeing progression happen, like as a skateboarder, like you, your main motivation is progression, totally. right? And so seeing progression happen, you know, just sparked this this thought and this idea, like, well, this should be like a nonprofit. We need to create more opportunities even for girls who just want to get into skateboarding and then for the girls who like are trying to like be skaters and pursue it. Um, and so that's when Leslie Cohen and I decided to start uh, nonprofit exposure skate. Nice. Five oh one C three and There you go. And by the way, this episode is going to be marked as a fundraiser. So if yes. you are inclined, just click on the little fundraiser link and all the pro- all the all your proceeds will go directly to exposure. And there you go. Thank you for helpful. doing that. Yeah. Of course. It's huge. It's the least I mean, we could do for yeah, sure. Definitely. That's beautiful. That's uh, skateboarding so beautiful. Yeah. You? Yeah. It's such a great community. You gotta support each other. You already Skater know. Yeah. Skaters. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. But I love it because you hit on something so important is just the progression now. You you planted the seed. Right, twelve years ago, but even before, before that, that. Before others that, planted the seed. But I'm talking about a little bit. Totally. I'm just talking about the exposure stuff, but. Again, like you, you see the progression year after year after year after year. And then now I, I think in 2023, 2024, it is going from day to day, the, the progression, uh, contest wild. to contest. It is just, I'm seeing, I mean, even at the exposure, uh, apologies, I forget her name. Uh, she did the kickflip, wait, kickflip melon in the bowl? What was it? Kickflip uh, Indy. Kickflip Indy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was just, that was so Who was that? Lily, right. Lily Erickson there you from go. Hawaii. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 12, 13 years old? She's 14. 14. And the thing so like right. about that bowl is like, it's it's not that easy to skate, especially like- It looks kind of small. Aerial maneuvers, yeah, you know, yeah. so to speak. Like airs in that thing. It's super round, super slippery. And she like freaking popped that kickflip bendy so- In her run. Wow. Yeah, and in I, I her just, run. It's just fun to watch, you know? So good. Like the energy was really, really great. And that's, yeah, that that was beautiful to see. And then on Vert, seeing Kihana Ogawa do a backtail shove. Oh, yeah. Like, that's like one of the most poetic tricks in skateboarding, <laughs> yeah, you know? Really, it really on is. On Vert. A backtail is great. A backtail is amazing, but the shove oh. out, it, for some reason, it's like poetic. For, it is. Yeah, it really a, is. It's such a classic trick. It was so beautiful. Yeah, yeah and she go. did a kickflip in the on Vert. Yeah, that's Let me the, ask this from the first time. Here it is, right here. Sorry. Oh, oh she so muscled that me? thing in. Yeah, definitely did. Look at that. Uh, oh, so rad. Boom. Oh, that's crazy. It was like easy, clear man. to the bottom right there. Almost. Seriously, yeah. Landed like halfway down yeah, the ramp. Yeah. Like it's so sick. It's like a free fall at that point. You're going from the like, coping on a yeah. shove and trying to stomp that thing. Like, but that's what we're talking about, though. Like that. It, that's just going to become the norm. That's going to become like the basic trick, you know? That's in great. The process, man. But like, you see girls like Reese Nelson now. <laughs> She's incredible. Come on. That's and, like next level. And I feel like. The thing that's beautiful is she's born into a world where she's not like, oh, do I belong here? Like, can I skate with you? Like, you know, it's, it's like just, how you had it in that sense. Right. Yeah. Like, right. like a lot of us from 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 my generation had it. You know, even Lizzie Armanto, she had to skate against the dudes for a while at right. Dutour and stuff like that. Nora, too. Mm-hmm. Like, we would skate together at Rye, like with the boys. Right. And And now you see, like, when there's a different culture that of of welcoming and inclusion that helps the progression as well like Big reese time. like i was skating with her yesterday she's just like does a 720 <laughs> nose grab yeah. <laughs> like, that's the like the hardest grab your feet are all floaty like she's like it's legit and she's 11 yeah she's growing up with tony hawk and like jimmy wilkins right now true seriously yeah, yeah. and colin yeah, mckay man. is like her little skate coach God, you could wow. see so that crazy. kind of like cause her completely. tricks her tricks she does like cable front nose like mm-hmm. the like lip tricks she does or there's colin of, mckay influence yeah she's like That's a real skater sick. skater yeah she just cares about like tech progression and skating mm, as much as possible yeah <laughs> she's so great <laughs> Such a cool little kid. Yeah. It's yeah. so fun yeah. to watch. I'm so here for it. I so love sick. every minute of it. So you're doing this exposure. I'm sure it's getting you know bigger each year. Each mm-hmm. year you're doing it. And then 
um, eventually the border got into it. And Ryan Clemens was just on our show. And we mm. talked about uh, the exposure stuff here. But uh, getting the border involved in it, I mean, obviously these aren't easy to do, right? <laughs> She's laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> like, it's probably a nightmare. Mm. Mm. But <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, you're you're going out there and you're raising like prize purses of sixty thousand dollars. You know, it's impressive. It's phenomenal. And like that prize, for, that's like a quarter of what the whole thing costs. I could imagine. You gotta print all the banners and get the vert ramp up and get the Ooh. permits and get the food patrol to come and make sure all the food is safe and the food you know. Patrol. <laughs> the food patrol. <laughs> Like, we that? call the food patrol. <laughs> no, no, no. Huh? The yeah. San Diego County Health Department. Okay, they make okay. sure, like, okay, well, <laughs> that's plastic. You're not allowed to be here. They kick a vendor out. We lose money. Like, it's wow. just like, wow. it's so many layers of like, you know, dealing with with city, the city permitting, the infrastructure, the vendors, the sponsors. The skaters, which you think would be the easy part, but they keep me up at night because they don't register till last minute. Yeah. And I have these nightmares, dude. I'm like, I'm going to get there and no one's going to be there. Yeah. I'm going to get there <laughs> and no one's going to skate. Like, only, like, and then it, they all sign up like the freaking we gov. Yeah. Isn't it funny? I think Clemens had mentioned something like that where it's like it was free sign up in the beginning and then that's where your problem was because it was free, right? But, but as soon as people had to pay an entry fee, that's when... They're like, yeah. oh, we're in. We're, we're showing serious. up now. Yeah. yeah. I've learned so much from the Border Boys. <laughs> yeah. They're so smart. And sometimes I'm really stubborn, so it takes me a while to process this information. Mm. So when they're telling me you need to charge the skaters, I'm like, this is for skaters. I, what do you mean charge the skaters? They already got to fly out. They got to pay for their little lunch. Sure. I can't char- I'm not going to charge them. I want them to have a good time. Could be free, enjoy themselves. <laughs> he said he, he said he had to kind of really yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. have that. It was a it was a, it was a conversation from multiple years. For multiple years. Um and we're not talking about an, an exuberant amount of money. It's just a nice little no, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an like, entry fee. Just like it's guaranteed if to show up. Guaranteed yeah. to show yeah. up. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I should have listened. I should have listened <laughs> before it got to this point, but I don't know. I, I have a feeling I know who this person is, but like someone thought they were gonna prank us. And they made all these fake little sign-ups. Yeah, right. What? <sighs> wait, 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 wait. I think wait, I know wait. who you are, so wait, before, shame on you. Before it, you, they had to pay? Yeah, or? so 2019. Okay. So fast forward from 2012 to 2019. By, by 2017, we're, we're getting like 160 girls and women, wow. non-binary individuals from all over the planet coming to skate. They're skating street, they're skating bowl, they're skating right. vert. It's awesome. It's awesome to see like the growth and progression. You know, we have like Leo Baker in the mix, Alexis Sablone, Lizzie mm-hmm. Armanto, mm-hmm. and then these girls that are up and coming that ended up in the Olympics, like Bryce Wettstein and Jordan Love Barrett. Love her. Wow. So great, right? So, like seeing it grow and seeing all this progression and seeing all the love, we, I, I never wanted to charge, and it wasn't like that big of an issue until 2019. Someone just out of out, whatever personal issues you may have been experiencing at that time, uh, made a bunch of fake signups. Wow. Dude. I'm and you, wait, you know who did it? I kind of have an idea. Wow. Wait, why would, why, why, why would someone do that? I don't know, because they knew, like, we're... They wanted to sabotage. Uh, that, that's a key word. I don't know. But you, know? you were they weren't paying for stuff back to... The no, I, I just no, wanted before. it to be free. Okay, okay. But, but, but... I was looking at the roster. I was like, whoa, we have like 257. I'm like looking at these names. I'm like, wow, I don't recognize any of these names. Uh, And I'm like being all naive, like, like, wow, like, you know, and then I get there and I'm like. But wait a minute. You have to use an email address to sign up or no? What was the deal? This is this is where you this, this is where the, you learn. We don't have this to. Don't have to <laughs> okay. We don't okay. have to dwell on the negative. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. Like it's fine. No, I, we're I gonna learned. Fi- we're gonna go. We're gonna go we TP their house. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna TP. Go, Kelly. Go to the I'm, store. I'm going to get, get, toilet get the toilet paper. <laughs> get some eggs. We're gonna to go. Do. We're, we're gonna get. Yeah. We're gonna get back. <laughs> but but no. So essentially, like I learned some of the borders, borders lessons like the hard way. Sure. Like those guys, they've they've been through it all. They're professionals. They're professionals. You hire those guys to do something. Everything's gonna be to the T on time, and. And I, I kid you not, like this past exposure, I was like texting Rob and Ryan, like, 
you know, nine o'clock at night, the night before the contest, because I'm still thinking about all the things. I'm like, okay, everybody's got to have a good time. We got to make sure that nobody's like snaking each other. Like, this is just a positive experience for the community. <laughs> so I'm texting them like, hey, can we do like an organized uh, jam session for the best trick? So that everyone's not dropping in on each other on the vert ramp and everyone has a chance to shine. You know, yeah, like okay, just trying okay. to like in a perfect want, world. Yeah, we don't want to text. Can we build a per- perfect here? world? <laughs> you know, and skateboarding, that's like everyone's like aggressive, right? Even yeah. the, the girls. Um and and Ryan, like, he texts me back right away. It's probably it's like midnight their time, because they just oh, come okay. from Florida, right? So they're on Florida time. And they're still answering me back, just super pro about it. Amelia. That may not be the coolest approach, but it you might be onto something. Let us think about it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, they're flying out here. They're already like giving us like this a great rate because they know we're a nonprofit. They know I try to turn leave no stone unturned to try to raise this money, right? And they they end up like they listen. You know, they listen. It's a it's a it's a back and it's forth. Like and then and then yeah. they bring great ideas. Like, you know, I know that a. Uh, I know that Poods is a beautiful skate park. And for years they told me, they're like, you can't just use the whole street course. It's a big mess. Like everyone's, it takes like so long to skate from one side to the other. It's not a good like competition venue. Like you got to change something. And I was like, well, I can't cut anything out. Like someone's going to be so bummed that they can't skate the volcano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me. 2015 was our first year at Poods, oh. and that's 2023 now. That's how long it took Crazy. me to be wow. like, okay, guys, let's cut the street course in half. Mm-hmm. And like, you could just hear Ryan like on the phone, like, oh, the final Thank Jeez. God. Right, <laughs> she right. let it happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it was so much better. Like, even from a viewer's perspective, like everything's linear. You see the way that they're skating and using the course, mm-hmm. you know, but all I hear is the people that are like, what about the flat bar? Right. You took oh. the flat bar out? And I'm like, Ryan, she's really upset that I took the flat bar out. <laughs> Ryan's like, no going back. Yeah, Ryan's you're like, good. you got to you just stick to it. Right. I know. I, I know. I'm like, but everyone's going to be mad at me that we took this. <laughs> took the flat but that's bar, rad yeah. that you're looking just, out for yeah, everybody. Yeah. Out, you know? Like genuinely, I just want everyone to like have a good time, to feel like they had an opportunity to where like, they can be a part of this thing. They could like bring their best foot forward. They could land that trick that everyone's like, ah, oh, you did it. Yeah. You know, sometimes that trick is a, it's a drop in because they never dropped into the vert before. Yeah. Right. Sometimes that trick is a, you know, a switch front 50 down the handrail, like mm-hmm. Paige Hine. For sure. Like, and it's just so great to, to see that atmosphere because we don't always see that in competition, right? And what we want to do is create an event that's like a, the atmosphere of everyone supporting each other because that's what skateboarding is all about. You know, you go to the skate park, you see homie over there who like maybe doesn't have a lot of experience skating. You see him land, what, whatever it is. You see someone land their first kickflip, oh, yeah. you're pumped. Yeah. You're not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, whatever, like I could do that. But, <laughs> you know? Straight so up. that's that's kind of the environment we, we try to create with exposure. And we have like... We have a youth program. We have an adult program. We do camps with Woodward. We do retreats. So we have like year round stuff. But the, mm. the the event is like the main thing that's most like involved with with just the competition sure. side, side sure. of the build, That builds them up and gives them motivation. I mean, hearing everybody like, you know, yes, you got yeah. that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep. One um, year. It goes a long way. One year, I just like hear this crazy loud cheer from the bowl. Like everyone's losing it. I'm like, whoa, what just went down? I walk over there. This this girl had never dropped in before. She nice. dropped in for the first time, you know? Everybody was she got psyched. like wow. the same level of cheers as like, you know, the kickflip indie sure, that yeah. went down. Sure. And that's that's Super skateboarding, impactful. right? Yeah, that's rad. We celebrate each other's progression. Yeah. I love it. I had I had a blast. I was bummed I couldn't go the second day because I was would be a lot of it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. No, it's, no worries. No worries. No, worries. It's a lot. <laughs> no, but I seriously, it was so much fun. I can't wait for next year. It's gonna be good. So wait, November second and third next year. So from the first <laughs> event, dude, gonna, we already got the up. permit. Let's go. <laughs> oh, you are, it's already done. We're already food vendors. Kind you know, of, we're we're getting that. Food patrol. Food patrol. Food, 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 yeah, we gotta call the food patrol. <laughs> yeah. 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 Food let me let me ask Sorry, this real quick. Um, from the first event, you said you had thirty four. Thirty four. And from this last event, what was the count again? This year we had one hundred and fifty seven. Mm. Last year we had a little bit more. We had two hundred and four. Okay. That's been wow. our record. We did 
during COVID, we did like a video part contest, uh, which was really sick. Like Thrasher uh, put all the winning parts uh-huh. on their site, and so everyone was so hyped sick, to uh, to try to win, like getting on the Thrasher site. And we had um, like Alyssa Steamer judge it with Jamie Ray's and Mimi Noop and Alex White. Legends. So sick. Yeah, that was super that, fun. That's nice. It was so sick to yeah. see some of these girls, specifically the ones from Japan, like submit video parts, you know? Mm-hmm. But so in during COVID, during those years, we had 252, I want to say. Hmm, sick. So wow. that's been our record. But okay. in person, 204 last wow. year, that was our that's record. Great. Interesting. Yeah. How long ahead do you have to plan something like this for? Like, are you already like, yeah, which one are you playing for next year? Obviously, you're playing for next mm-hmm. year's already. So specifically with the Encinitas permit, you have to apply for uh, in March the year prior. So in March, we've already had our dates. We've secured our venue okay. for 2024. So November 2nd and 3rd for November 24. Um, and it, it takes, like, I'd say the fundraising is the hardest because you're, you're, you're trying to, like, connect with people. And it's so, it's so hard because people get hyped and they're like, yeah, just hit me up. Like, we want to come in big. And then, like, send them a little email. Like, yeah, send me an email. This time we're setting our budget. Send him an email. Mm. Uh, hello? <laughs> hello? You were Crickets. so, you were super enthused. Uh, yeah. Right, what happened? You were so what enthused. Happened? Call him up, leave a voice. Hey, I left you an email when you told me to, you know? Yeah. So like it, it take like, the fundraising is the thing that takes the longest because it's like, we're just like picking up little like, oh, booth, $500 booth there, $500 booth right. here. Like, yeah. you just gotta like piece all the pieces together. It's kind of... So does someone just... If they want to help, do they just hit you up, or do they just, like in the fundraiser thing we have in our description below? Go, go, click that. Uh, do they just can they just give money to that, or do they hit you up? Hey, I want to be a part of this. Yeah, so there's a lot of different different levels in which people can support. So, yeah. so let me like take a step back to because sometimes um, when we use the term nonprofit, I want to specify that like all of our programs are about giving back to like communities in need like not just skateboarding our main event has always been a fundraiser for survivors of domestic violence Mm -hmm. so each year all the proceeds from the event go to support community resource center which is a a local shelter and this is just an issue that's more prevalent than people think and just incredibly toxic so we're trying to raise awareness raise funding for that and then during our programming throughout the year, so our, our youth program, Skate Rising, we, we teach girls how to skate. Girls, they're usually like four to 12, very cute age. <laughs> we get them involved in skateboarding. We have like Bryce Wetstein and all these pros come and teach. And then uh, we also include them in, in an activity that teaches them to give back to the community. So maybe they'll be signing anti-bullying pledges and creating friendship bracelets for victims of bullying or they're putting together support kits for the unhoused and basically trying to teach compassion through these activities that are in addition to skateboarding so our skate rising program does that and then our adult program called seshi because there's a lot of like grown women trans non-binary individuals who want to learn to skate but still find a skate park kind of intimidating. Mm-hmm. So we create a welcoming space and um, in exchange for a canned good that we then donate to the community resource center. They could, you know, we teach them to skate, we give them the gear, you know. And, they give and you a can of green beans. Yeah, can yeah. of green beans. We're like, here's a skateboard, here's a helmet. Like, Rad. let's learn how to ollie. Rad. Like, Love let's that. do it. You know, and that's Callie Kelsey. She mm. founded our youth program after we were already established as a, as a nonprofit for a few years. So she's helped us run that and develop that. And essentially, uh, so that, that's why I just want to go back. Like we are about skateboarding, growing the skateboarding community, but we teach like the importance of, of just giving back to especially those in need. If I could ask you a question. So how does it work? Like if you if, say, okay, so you have to throw this exposure event, right? You have to raise money for it. But then at the same time, you're also raising money for victims of domestic violence. How do you, it must be a, 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 a wire you have to walk of wh- what we're donating and what we're using for the next event. And, and so it must be a balancing yeah. act. It's really funny 
That's actually not that funny. Um, <laughs> it's just so hard. We just actually, we never end up like raising very much money at the actual event. Like we, do, we sell all the raffle tickets mm -hmm. and the merch and, you know, we sell sponsorship spaces, but we just end up building it into our budget that we're going to donate at least the same amount as last year. And, and if we raise more, we'll donate more. Got you. But like. So you have just, a number set and you're like, we're we going to donate this. We have a number set that we just try to, not, not that we try to reach it. We're going to donate that money regardless. But if people, um, if more people help contribute, we can donate more. Gotcha. But essentially, so we, we build it in. But yeah, I think you're picking up on the fact that it's a lot of like boxes to try to check, to try to just, we're just trying to support like yeah. skaters, people in skateboarding, like the skateboarding community, you know, it'd be sick if it was like, if the vendor village was closer to like an agenda to where the industry is actually there, you know, sure. like, I mean, we had like Etnies there, we had Arbor there, mm -hmm. we had like some brands that are endemic, but it, it's really hard getting, getting those people to show up and, you know, thank goodness to like, to like Woodward and Bones Love Milk. They're, they're the ones that kind of came in bigger this year, but love that. Yeah, that it's so hard to like to generate the money to, to do this, but I do a lot of grant writing. There's a lot there's like money to be found in these pockets um, okay. of government entities, whether it's from the city or the county. Hmm. Um, so I do oh, a lot so of oh, wow. a okay. lot of research, a lot of time yeah, behind right. the keyboard, you know, and a, and and we have a we have a team, you know, we've got we've got Jess, Gabby, and Angela, and they all help with a lot of the different tasks. Shout out to Jess, Gabby, and Angela. Big shout out. Wow. But here's the thing: is because Clemens was on the show, and we were we, uh, a lot of the stuff we just talked about with Clemens, it was about events and stuff like that. And nobody, events are like literally for the culture of skateboarding because yeah. nobody is making damn near any money throwing skateboard events and all the people that work there and he brought up exposure too. a lot of them are volunteers yeah a lot of them you lean on a lot of volunteers so it's so beautiful i it's so beautiful to see people coming together because they believe in something and the weekend like you you saw me for a minute but we're all running around like crazy people so like <laughs> our little core team i just mentioned you know uh -huh. jess gabby and angela and i yeah. we're running around like that like for months right but then on the week of, this like squad of volunteers shows up and they're freaking doing, so, loading up the U-Haul. Like it's middle of the night, we're throwing banners up on the vert ramp and I'm like, oh, that's the wrong banner. Uh -oh. I gotta order another one. Like uh -huh. we're trying to set the whole park up. I'm like over there like sweeping up poods, you know, like yeah. the day before. <laughs> we do, we do, do all the things, yeah. right? But it's a labor of love. Yes. Dude, it's so beautiful to see like the community come together mm -hmm. for the sake of of the culture, progression, for skateboarding like dude, we're such a family. Like mm. I can't even explain it. I we're, it's after the event, we're with a group of volunteers. We just spent the day we just spent like the day after the event like breaking down poods, trying to make it as clean as possible for all the skaters coming back to use it. You know, we're taking apart like the this ramp that was a part of our vendor village and we're getting to the end of the day and you know i'm like oh i should really like treat everyone to dinner you know like that's the least i could do and like we have people like you know best pizza and and beaver fleming like both of the like those individuals and companies being like yeah we'll get you some dinner like oh I send your grubbies. I'm sponsored by them. Like put it Amazing. on, put it on Beaver <laughs> Fleming's tab. Hey, shout out to Beaver Fleming. Sa He's the shout, man. I, love I was Beaver, like, bro. I was like outside of <laughs> Senior Grubbies, and I got that text from Beaver that he was going to feed all the <laughs> volunteers, and I'm like, <laughs> so cool. I love skateboarding, yeah. you know. And Chris yeah. Conway feeding us pizza all weekend. Like, I just, yeah. There's just something so beautiful about people coming together for the love of it. And it's just because they want to give back. I, totally. Skate, I mean, skateboarding, it's given me everything. It's yeah. given I us love everything. Skateboarding. Yeah. We wouldn't, none of us would be sitting here without skate, damn damn skateboarding. Sure. You know? And I'm, I'm so glad that I'm here to witness like all the girls and the women. Just, I love it. I'm so here for it. Same. Love it. And I'm glad that you guys are experiencing what we've experienced. You know what I mean? Like, that, it's the, the community. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is what makes skateboarding so damn special. 100%. Yeah. That's why if you see like the signs all over our little exposure event, we have a uh, community over competition. Mm. So it's like, okay. yeah, it's a contest, but like it really, it's just 
it's about the community like for sure for yeah. sure and you got the uh etnies colorway right the uh mm-hmm. exposure Ooh. this is the, the yeah. exposure colorway shoe a cup so yeah. the yellow shoe is for kids right it's a kid shoe mm-hmm. and that's the cup Cup yep. sole. Mm, you got the Vulcan. This is the, the, wind, the windrow, but it's the colorway. And, and we, we got, got the exposure in there. Now I saw when they, Soul. I saw mm-hmm. when you, uh, they gave that to you at the exposure. Did you know? Do were you working on this shoe for a while, or what was it? What so was the we, deal? we were, we were working on it. Um, Fred and Don both like they've just been so supportive of this mission. Don Brown, and Fred Manchie. Yeah. Yes, and so when they came to me and said we want to do a collab we were just we're thrilled right so we're helping like give input on the design of the shoe and all the merch that comes with it okay and but fred was very clear about the fact like well these come out in 2024 like, oh what a long wait you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it takes a long time for shoes it yeah. takes a long time and i and i get that uh, and so run around at exposure I think I just lost my debit card or something. Oh. I have no idea. I'm like running around and someone's like, come to the Etnies booth. I'm like, why? Like, why don't you come to the Etnies booth right now? <laughs> like, I'm looking for my fire debit card. I put yeah, out, I thought right? it was another fire. Down, I like yeah. run over there. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, wait here. Okay. <laughs> Fred's daughter comes up, gives me this little shoe box. So wow. cute. Oh. And I open it up and I get one. I get a pair Got in my size because yeah. I'm not a sample size, but... Man, so I just saw. Oh, they made just, you a special. They pair. made me a special oh, pair. So perfect. Yeah, I almost started crying. I was just sitting there on the ground. I'm like, oh, I can't walk on the grass now. These are brand new. Oh. <laughs> so these will be out next year. So this is like a, right. a very uh, sneak peek at these. Mm-hmm. I top, love it. Top of the year? Um, yeah. No, so it's holiday 24, but okay. the like shops can put, put pre orders in okay. now ish. Now ish. Yeah, well, so yeah. holiday. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you do it now, this is all the shops out there, go buy these yeah, shoes. Go, yeah, go, <laughs> yeah, go. So let's support put, put this. Some, yeah. Yeah. Um, holiday 2024 is around the same time as the next exposure. exposure. Yeah. Exactly. So, so they'll timing. they'll be at the booths. They'll be for sale at the booth finally at exposure mm, nice. next year. But yeah, in terms of like placing the orders, that's going to happen pretty soon. But it's didn't I see one? Didn't I see one with Velcro? Where yes. did that one go? That was a little kid shoe. But there's like three but, sizes. There's like. But that's amazing. Like Velcro? the. F- it's in the box. It's in the box. Oh. It's in the box. It's in the box. Damn. Should I get it? Yeah, can you get it? Oh yeah. Might as well. Where is the Where is the box? Find it. I just feel like it's you should show this because it's. I think there. that's one of the coolest things is you the had Velcro. the Velcro. Yeah. I don't know. Little kids don't know how to tie shoes. Like you know, you learn. I still yeah. have trouble. Yeah, yeah, I know. You, tie shoes. Uh, yeah. Imagine yeah. went through his phase all day. This is a good. This is a classic shoe right here. With the so, E on it. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Look at those Look little at, shoes. Yeah, Look how tight that those is. Guys. Dude, that's Look so sick. Guys. Those will fit my and cat. Those will fit my cat Larry. Honestly, I would rock though. I would rock those if they made size nines, but <laughs> I don't think they make them that big. These are I, little. Well, I think these are a size nine. You're well, a sample I'm size. Well, I'm talking. I'm sample he wants size. The Velcro. Whoa. But I want the Velcro. Wow. He wants the Velcro. <laughs> no, I'm. I li- so I, lucky to be I, sample size. Working at Soltech and being sample size. Best thing ever. Match made in heaven. Yeah, exactly. Look at these little yeah. shoes. They're, hey, they're so cute. But congrats on this. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Not only one pair, not only two pairs, three pairs uh, for all ages. It's that's amazing. amazing. I, I mean, it. yeah, that's super just cool. Soltech, you know? Yeah. yeah. Built by skaters, for skaters, still skater owned yeah. and run. Oh, Come dang. on. Yeah. It doesn't get any better than that. Like, It really doesn't. It really does Seriously. not get better than that. How, what, what, so what was the defined, or like, is that the colors of exposure, the black and, and yellow? Yeah, we kind of started, like, when exposure started, we were kind of like black and white, and then we were kind of black and gold. Um, and I was like doing a lot of like the graphic stuff or like pretending I knew how. <laughs> and I quickly realized like, it's really hard to do gold like on a website, yes. you know? Oh. <laughs> or, like, it's a tricky color. How do you even like, print gold like it's just a, you know it's a, it's a dull yellow what's the hex code it's not for, even, co- for yeah. gold like, it's, it's, it doesn't I and then it was like kind of mustardy and now it's just it's it's more yellow it's just mm-hmm. it's vibrant you know it pops it's it energetic pops, yeah. it's funny that because uh like our nine club logo like i had a hex code for it we had mm. a special orange yeah. but you know we'd get stuff made and it would be either like too too orangey or it'd be too red it was like somewhere in the middle too yellowy too orange. So now I'm just like orange. 
Just orange. Right. That's, it. that's, ex- orange. that's exactly what I was yeah. like. No, no, it's gold. Like, no, no, it's mustard. No, it's yellow. It's just yellow. It's just yellow. yellow. It's yellow. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you just got to like make the executive executive decision. And exactly. Be like just, yellow, orange. There's, there's a lot of layers to like being a part of creating something where right? you got to think about how things look on all the platforms. and. Totally. Is heck? this like a shoe that you like to skate personally? Dude, I love the Volk. So the Windrow Volk is like. That's what I love to mm-hmm. skate. It's a, and, uh, it's a good looking shoe. Yeah, I mean, personally, I, I've always just loved black and Volk, you know? Yeah. It's man. just like, I know it's boring, but. Well, it's kind of a classic look classic, for, a, for a vulcanized shoe, classic right? Classic look, and it just like really good board feel. Yeah. Like, if I can't feel, like, I can't do cup soles. I've tried. I've tried to like microwave them, run them over with the, sh- with the car. <laughs> 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 skate them a couple times I can't I it's just, a different feeling for sure it's yep. too different I'm yeah. not like I'm not over here jumping down any stairs so I'm all about the Volk how did that you works. even get on Etnies that's a good question <laughs> uh, well I rode for Vox for a while oh, okay. Vox was cool for a while yeah. it was sick and I was super pumped to be on that program uh, maybe it was like five years or something uh, and Daxter was working at Vox at the time and now he's uh, working at 224, doing, still supporting Exposure to Law, Dr. Lucier. Mm-hmm. And so I was riding for Vox, and Vox kind of like, it just dwindled, you mm-hmm. know? It's just it it's kinda, kind of a bummer. Yeah. Um, they made an effort, though. Yeah. They did. They made a solid effort. They had a good couple of years. Skateboarding you know? business is difficult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially shoe business. Yeah. 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 Any type of business, god yeah. damn it. And, <laughs> and uh, Don and I crossed paths so many times, and... You know, he's so funny. Every time he would see me, like, in my little Vox shoes, he'd be like, oh, you look like your feet hurt. Your feet look... (laughs) (laughs) Leave it to God. He always says the funniest things, right? Meanwhile, he's probably standing on his head. Yeah. He's on his head (laughs) Doing some weird shit. Yeah, Yeah, so he's always like, oh, your feet hurt in those shoes? Like, he's always, like, kind of teasing me about it. And so, like, when Vox fizzled, like, I was kind of like, Donna... My feet are bare. Yeah. <laughs> my feet hurt. My feet are bare. Hurt. Dude. Now they're hurting. Now they're hurting. Yeah. My feet are strong. Yeah. And uh, I think it was maybe like 2015 or 2016. Oh. Started sending me shoes. Nice. So, yeah. It's just, I love these shoes, That's man. awesome. Now we got the so exposure good. shoe and everything. Congrats. Yeah. Coming out next year. Pumps. Pre-order these if you're a Please. skate shop. Let's support. Um, it's incredible. I love it. Yeah, these are great. Do a lot of these proceeds go to fundraising? I mean, we're basically one big fundraiser at this oh, yeah, point. We're yeah, just yeah. trying. We're just trying to make all the things happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tie things together. So, yeah, um, I, I don't know how many percent, but yeah, percentages of these sales go Beautiful. to exposure. Sweet. Maybe twenty. Let's say it's like let's call it twenty, Don. <laughs> hey, that's a nice, that's there a good number. There. That's yeah. a good number. Yeah. Right? That's a solid right? number, huh? Got yeah. Twenty, twenty percent. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I, I'm. It's it. Women skateboarding has come a long way. No doubt, and it's beautiful. It is, yeah. and but we have people like you to thank for that. You know, Hell yeah, mm. it's it's awesome. One thousand percent, it's awesome. Any, I mean, oh yeah, well, Arbor. Let's oh, talk about yeah. Arbor. We got your board. Look at this. We we were tripping yeah. on this board because like it's like it's. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's a neuron, like it, a brain cell. No, but but the look. Chris doesn't like, know it's about like those. Shiny. Sorry. No, no. no. <laughs> it stands <laughs> out. If that's on the wall, like it, it's definitely. No, standing we were out. we were tripping on the the, the foil. The foil type yeah. shit. Yeah. Looks yeah. Good. So that one's coming out in March. That one's coming out in March. I'm super pumped on how that graphic came out. She walked in. She's I like, know. I've never seen this. Yeah, yeah it's it so <laughs> sick. Uh, but right now, the graphic that I've got out is the Schmingus Dingus, which is based. Um, Excuse me? Schmingus Dingus. Okay. Schmingus Dingus. <laughs> you call Chris okay. right yeah, yeah, I know. What'd you, I have a great story behind that. <laughs> I was about to say, like, what'd you call me? No. <laughs> so essentially, the graphic is based on the fact that in Poland, there's a holiday. It's the day after Easter every year, the Monday after Easter. And it's just a giant water fight. And I remember being a little kid in Poland and my grandma would be like, oh, honey, you can't, you can't be wearing that today. Like wear my little nice shirt, whatever, as a seven-year-old, whatever a nice shirt is there. <laughs> and go outside. Like you're, it's like basically like block style housing, like just big apartment complexes. Mm-hmm. Like 
grandmas are dumping buckets of water out the window, like the firemen are in on it, they're spraying people down, and like we didn't have like fancy water guns like that one, so we save up our two liter bottles from like Coca Cola or whatever, and we just like make a hole at the top oh, and just like gun, spray yeah. each other, like. It's like no holds bar. That's if you're leaving fine. your house Look, that a, day, you're going to be freaking sick. This is Schmingus Dingus right here. <laughs> That's really funny. How many, what, what's, the, what's the population over there in the, in, the, in the town you grew up in? Ooh. Do we know in that? In Nova Sargino? In the wow. Nova Sargino. Can we Google that? Because I have no idea. Raj, I don't know how you're going to spell N-O-W-A. that. W A S A R Z N O W A S A R Z. A A R R Z Z N N A A Population. You take a wild guess. I don't know, man. I can't. I don't think Google knows what this is. Two thousand oh, two thousand seventeen. No, that can't be right. Six thousand people. Six thousand people. Does that sound right? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you haven't been she was there. Seven. I, I I went to visit actually in March. Okay. And they have a freaking skate park now. What? Oh. I couldn't even believe it. It was like this little prefab park. Okay. That's cool. You didn't have but anything I was to do with pumped. it. No, you didn't I. Have a, you didn't have a, okay. No. Which, I mean, I wish I could have brought a skate park. I don't sure. know. Yeah, but the sick. fact that it's there now, it's just that's so cool. Your parents moved yeah, back to the same city, or you no? Said, they like yeah. moved into like like a farm town okay and they just my dad my dad he decided that retirement means he builds a house from scratch yeah yeah you were saying that before but the cabin yeah the back cabin. To Poland. <laughs> yeah it's kind of like the uh it's like a little village where my grandma grew up so oh, they inherited okay. like just property Land. and my dad had to like chop down trees and like raise the land and like just build a house from scratch. So my dad and my mom are just they're out chilling. there chilling in a house they built. They're like, oh, okay, Amelia, next week we're gonna get chickens. Is this yes. is this is this the park? <laughs> I love is this it. the park or no? Oh my gosh! What that looks really that, that might, looks that could that be might it. be it. I didn't get to skate it because it was covered in snow. But is that a real? That looks like it. <laughs> that'd be sick. Listen, there's talented people in, in <laughs> Nova Sajina. <laughs> yeah, Nova Sajina. <laughs> You got a volleyball court in the back. Yeah. I almost want to see a picture of the house that your dad built. I know. Yeah, mm. sounds amazing. Yeah, I'll have to show you on my phone after. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I pull it up, but it's like on my phone. It's not going to work. It's not on the Google. Do they have I, parakeets uh, out there? Oh, you know. What happened to Tom and Jerry? Any. Yeah. Oh, dude, I got a cat. Oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> not with Tom and Jerry. Oh in the, in the man. No. Oh, it was so devastating. I was like in fifth grade and I come home. My parakeets, like they got really smart and they figured out how to get out of their cage, uh, like through uh, the little yeah. things. So like when we would leave, they'd fly around the house. They'd just fly around. Like parents are at work. I'm at school. And one day I just, I'm the first one home, come inside, see like a trail of feathers. Uh, oh no. Like, oh no. Did they get <laughs> Tom or Jerry? Oh, they got them both. Oh, oh sure. Oh, wow. It's my cat. She was hungry, I guess, you know. God. What can you do? I Listen, never they're got natural, another bird. They're natural born hunters. Yeah. You know, you kind of put, you know, yeah. you kind of put it into the, you kind, of, you, kind of, you kind of made it happen, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn. <sighs> I'm sorry. Did you, you, get, know, did you get a, you got, a yeah. bird after? No, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, you gave Tom and Jerry oh. a beautiful life. Yeah. yeah. Tom you and know. Jerry had a good life. You know, they lived in America, in the jungle. What was it? <laughs> what was the cat's name? Uh, the cat's name at that time, I want to mm-hmm. say, was Pusha. Pusha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Do we know? It's just like it's like a cutesy name oh, for like man. a like fluffy. It's kind of oh, like fluffy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I yeah. like I like Something human you... names for for animals. Like my name, my cat's name is Larry. Oh. Yeah. It's a girl. It's a girl too. cat. Yeah. yeah. Aww. Uh, I have a yeah. cat named Indy. Indy? She's also a girl. Oh. She's like a Bengal, so she's crazy. I love those. Those ones. cats are high energy, yeah. right? Too high energy. Yeah. We had to, like, Alec built her a catio because she was freaking out. Oh, we got a- coyotes where we live, so we can't let her out. Oh, oh. You, have outdo- you have a catio. You have an outdoor <laughs> little cat. Ca- she can- she's got a wheel. No she way. runs on a wheel. Yeah. That's, That's amazing. Rad. She's got a lot of energy. She's like eight years old, and she's still like bouncing off the walls. It's so funny what we do for these animals. I know. I They're mean, the best, you, they, Larry looks at me with this face. I can't say no to yeah. anything. Mm. What Dude. does Larry ask you for? 
food, treats, mm. pets, what? back scratches, Aww. all of the above. Mm-hmm. Has I, Larry I, ever come to the studio? Has he been no, on No, Larry show? will not. No. It's, she doesn't travel well. Mm. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Cats, you gotta. Cats are from so a young un- age. You gotta like get them out. You can't yeah, take an old cat and just kind of put yeah. them in new environments. It's not yeah. good. We tried the leash thing when she was younger, but she was like, <laughs> she'd want to go out and she'd go out on the leash, and then mm. we'd cross the street and she'd lay down. Right. She'd be like, this mm. is dumb, you guys. I'm a cat. I shouldn't be yeah. on a leash. <laughs> should be They're at so the house, chilling. It, unpredictable. There's, I feel like if one. you don't know them. Yeah. Wow, that's very. That's, that's essentially what yeah. what our catio looks like. It's got a running wheel for a bangle. Look wow. at that! Look at yeah. that! The I've seen the wheel. So wow, it, it's it's a um, cats are interesting because you know you you buy a wheel, mm-hmm. they might not use it. You roll up a piece of paper, yeah, and you throw it at them, and they they they'll go crazy for that. But you buy them a, a fifty dollar toy. Oh and yeah, they, they you know they. We they tried the all difference. the toys. The boxes, though. Yeah. The boxes that the toys don't come in, let's go. Oh, She'll yeah. go all day on right. that. She'll yeah. see the toy, see the box, go for the box, <laughs> mm-hmm. piece of paper. Yeah, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're out of their minds. She loves the wheel, though. So. That's so funny. Bangle right. owners out there. There's a cat right here. We're using the wheel. <laughs> Larry would not use the wheel if I gave it. I know for a fact Larry would look at that thing <laughs> and be like, that little hamster. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's pretty You want me though. to do that? They're loud, though, like the, the bangles. They freaking just scream, you know. They're just start meowing like crazy because mm. they just want your attention. Mm. Larry's a talker. Oh, she talks. Yeah, that's very sweet. Uh, so cool. we got the shoes. We got the next exposure coming out next year. What 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 are the dates on the exposure? In case anybody wants to fly in and check those out. Yeah, November second and third, back at Encinitas. Okay, we'll have street. We'll have vert. We'll have bowl. We'll have these shoes out. You yes. know, the neuron board will be there too. The neuron, everything. Yeah. We're, we're going full, how, full you blast. You should set up yeah, like we'll a little live. Can we do like a nine club? I don't know. How would we do? Yeah. Maybe, maybe we could do a booth out there. That'd be sick. Mm. Can we That'd s- be cool. Yeah, what, what can we do though? Just like a... Meet should I set up like a meet yeah? Should, should, I, should, I, should I set yeah. up like a oh, meet and greet? Yeah. Here we go. Should I set up like an autograph <laughs> sign? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll get Do some imagine. posters printed. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. That'd be no, perfect. but I, we would love. I mean, just to come down there and experience. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. I I, I encourage anybody out there to go check it out. It's fun. Yeah. Had a good time. It's, it's just seeing it's the community of skateboarders come together and support each other. Right. It's Definitely. a good vibe. Hundred yeah. percent. Well, thank you for coming down. Actually. Yeah. Oh. Actually. Oh. Hold on, she's reaching down there under the suit. She's so, grabbing a big old bag right there. Well, maybe this is okay. the best location. <laughs> what is this going on here? So, oh, we got you know, oh. we're, not, we're not Tampa, but Look at we this. appreciate them. Okay. So, you know, we want to make sure that you get a... Just what is this? Up. An Expoa oh. just for showing <laughs> up super award? Dope. That's super dope. Oh, you got to put it on? Okay. I got a just for showing up award. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. <laughs> oh. okay. Just like Tampa. That's the first yeah. time I've ever been. They don't get medals at Tampa, though. That's so. Uh... Oh, well, we're serious. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> Did I there get you this? go. Look at this. I might have. And the thing. Mm-hmm. I got both. That's super is that a knee pad? This is a knee pad. Yeah. yeah. Just for Somewhere. showing up award. Yeah. There you go. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Thank you so much. Meter trophies. That's this is the first trophy bad. I've ever gotten. Really? Well, like Little League Baseball got a couple of little trophies. Well, within everyone within got skateboarding. Within <laughs> skateboarding. Wow. This, is the first, this is the first medal. Yeah, so but wait a Jess, minute. who it's I spoke silver, about though. earlier. Where, where's my gold medal? Oh, gosh. Oh, oh yellow. We don't use gold. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> you can spray paint it later. No, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't oh, okay. even. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Green That's in paint. yellow, though, right there. Written there. So, so, so Jess, who I was telling you about earlier, she makes those medals, and the ones that are trophies she takes recycled skateboards Mm -hmm. and she makes all the trophies in addition to doing like tons of work on the back end she like what do you mean she makes these how did she make them she's magic she got a little machine she's just a magical being (laughs) wow damn i got a medal for showing up it's incredible yeah it's super cool i never got anything before dubs (laughs) i never win (laughs) any i've I've entered raffles i've entered all kinds i never win anything it's gotta start somewhere bro hey chris congratulations dude Thank you, Kelly. Man, yeah. that means a lot, bro. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Appreciate well, that. Well, I do want to give you all more gifts oh, too. We got crew necks okay. for nice. for oh, all. Y'all Damn. can pick your sizes, but essentially these are the colors that, that we one. have. You taking the purple that, one, Raj? Yeah, that's a purple. actually Raj is a. We got, he, those are both we got of those colors. Artesian gold. Great on you, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? Ooh, <laughs> and nice Nantucket red. red. Okay. Ooh, I like that. So. 
Y'all will have Perfect. your pick. I have plenty of sizes with me as well. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. What else? Super special gift. Much. Those are nice too. Nice. So, I'm into the uh, pastels. You know, yeah. I have a pastel. Nice, right? yeah. This is kind of a, yeah. a little, a little That's bit. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, so this gift is from Arbor. Ooh. It's really cool. So Arbor has they they partner with a like a legacy forest in Hawaii. Okay. Where they have like a koa tree forest. So essentially helping support like reforestation and like offsetting, you know, we we use a lot of a lot Global of wood skateboard and stuff production, like you know. So kind of like giving back. So actually out there okay in Hawaii mm. there is a tree oh and it is the nine club nine club legacy tree wow, wow. Mm -hmm. how do we know which tree it is when we go you visit can track it, it. Okay. you can literally tra there's a gps coordinate oh, right here damn. so what? in celebration of 7 years Wow. I, I think there's a There's a like a, wait, what? Year. This is insane. But wait a minute. We, we could Why is there so many? We of have them? property in Hawaii. Because you guys. each <laughs> each get a certificate. <laughs> oh, we each get one? We, you each get one. We've Look got at this. four here. Got I can't see wow. if there is there a name. There's no Raj, name. type in these coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see our tree. Yeah. 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 Build a tree fort there. That's super cool. Well, thank you. I'll, yeah, let I'll, me deliver that to you. Oh, thank wow. you. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Type Amelia. in the coordinates, Raj. Thank you, Arbor, and thank you. Amelia. Nineteen point. Yeah, much love, Arbor. Nine four six seven three. Hold, please. <laughs> what are you, JC? Yeah. Hold and on. Oh, go ahead. Here's well, Grayson Raj, Fletcher. Go. Oh, he's planting. planting the tree. Planting the tree. He planted this our tree. Too much stuff on the wow. table. Huh? Is that Sorry. the tree that he planted for us? Yeah, he went there. Um, last week when you DM'd me, I, <laughs> we they sent over Grayson there. over. Let's see. Over to plant yeah, this sure tree. See, see it. Yeah, look at that. That's that's really really cool, dude. Definitely. We got our own tree, dude. Who would have thought? Mm -mm. Yeah, it's so wild that you could just track it. You could see how it's doing. Wait, well, you see I it? Like we're you gonna can see it? Or apparently, I didn't try to plug this in, but you know, but we're plugging wait, it in wait, right now. Hold on. Wait, there's hold a on. camera on this thing? No, no, no. Well, Google Maps. Google Maps. Okay. So okay, Raj. Nineteen point nine four six seven three. Okay, the other, the other one is negative one five five point three seven three five four six 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 seven. <laughs> We're gonna check it. We're gonna find our tree right here. Boom! There's our tree. Wow! Where the red Look at the, where the red thing is, yeah. Raj, right there. Zoom it in. It's a, it's oh, a little, it's little one right now, but oh, it's gone. No, it's where's our tree? It's, 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 it's a seed. It's just, it just got no. planted the other day. Yeah, it oh, just got by um, mm -hmm. Grayson. By Grayson, yeah, he flew it's out still there. Still growing. Hand planted it. Are you sure Invert you're in the right planted it. Raj. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to double check this. I, it looks close enough for me. Yeah, it looks pretty close. You can tell by the background, right? Look at it. Can you change it to like <laughs> level ground? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah, can you? Yeah, good. Can we do Street View? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We street View right Check now, out the Street View. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you That's to Arbor nice. for our Nine Club tree. That's incredible. Definitely. Shout out to Arbor. Hey, Arbor makes really good stuff. I trip mm -hmm. out the shop here in Venice is incredible. Yeah. A lot of good people work there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. How did, you, how did you link up with Arbor? So actually, Alec was riding for them. Okay. When, when we met, and he kept telling me about them, and like, I I was riding for um, Tragedy Skateboards, which mm -hmm. was it was a rad company. It was just kind of like a smaller um, project mm -hmm. that that was being run locally, and they helped support me with the board. Um, but Alec helped, kind of. He was like, "You need to like you need to ride for like a proper company. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got to ride for Arbor." And then, you know, um, they watched the documentary, and like we kind of got the link up with Bob, the owner, and yeah, they just. It's uh, it's really rad to have people like believe in you. you know? No, <laughs> like, for sure. I it's understand. wild. It's yeah. been ten years now in Arbor. But it's cool that yeah. they make such good product, and they have they're having a good skate team and everything. And it's mm -hmm. cool to see them grow as well. Yeah, we've got Ace Pelka on now too. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we've got Grace and Fletcher. It's yeah. Because yeah, Shine, Imes. Shine Imes just got announced. Yeah, team. he's super sick. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. he just started squad. doing like a team and. Oh, boards, right? Like, mm -hmm. like six, seven years ago or something. 
Yeah, so Shuriken's board came out first. Shuriken Shannon. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah so he got a board. He's the man. Okay. He's the man. Definitely. Shout out Shuriken. Big shout He's got out, a man. good yeah. tray flip, dude. So good. So good. Yeah. Just a good dude all around. Oh, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. He just had a kid, right? I believe so. I think I heard that. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congrats Nicole. to you for everything. Yes. Thank you so much for all this yeah. gear. We got some stuff to give you too. Oh yeah. Wait a minute, you're not well, done I yet though. Thing. Okay, okay. Because you said you you keep saying you you're like you want to skate vert, you know? Oh, I've said that a hundred times. You said that like a yes. hundred times. You need some slightly bigger wheels, so I'm not hitting you with 60s. Okay. I'm hitting you with 57. 57. Speed laps right and here. These are what are these? These are your are these your these are your wheels? Yeah, yeah. Made by oh, Speed Lab. It's a rad company okay. from the East Coast. Nice. So 57. 57. It's not too okay. big, you know. Okay. Like Let's see that drop in, Chris. Yeah, that'll get you started right yeah, there. Yeah, we'll get you started, dude. Listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> it matches your shirt too, dude. They, do. they really yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. They really no do. excuses at yeah. this point. Well, listen, I forgot my board in the car. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I use that excuse for everything. Uh, but we have gifts for you yeah. too. Aww. Yeah, we, Kelly, we do the honors. Yeah, we okay. got some Yeti stuff that we like Ooh. to give out. You know, mm -hmm. we got to stay hydrated. We Ooh. also got to. You know, keep our coffee and tea warm or extremely hot. I'm an extremely hot guy. I like hot beverages. Yeah, same here. Even like if it's hot outside, everyone's like, why are you getting a hot coffee? I'm like, no, no, no. Coffee's got to be hot. Yes. Yeah. I'm not Welcome on the no ice. iced coffee for you. No. I'm not on the iced coffee stuff. Oh, <laughs> wow, thank this you, is, Kelly. That's thank really you. nice. Thank you. We gotta, Dang. Okay. Amelia, first of all, thank you so much for everything that you've done in skateboarding. Yes. It's amazing, and I'm a big fan, and a big fan of what you do, and just what the future holds with you guys. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. So anything we can do, let us know. This Please is do. huge. Hundred percent. Thank, yeah. thank you so much for having me on. It just me it means the world to me. Of course. And you guys have really built a really rad thing here. I appreciate You've that. You've built an amazing <laughs> thing here. I hope that you like take a step back sometimes and go, oh, holy, what? We, what? It's fun. You it's did fun. It. I look did at it. it. I look at it. I look at it every day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> look at Chris with this metal on. Like he's yeah, like, <laughs> you know, but when you're in it, when you're in it, when you're in it, sometimes you don't realize. Oh, and yeah. And then you like, you just got to. Put in perspective, y'all are crushing. We, it. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, we we just we we are we go day by day. You know, yeah. we just we uh, it's we love it. I love talking to people, and I love just kind of figuring out what makes people tick. Or we all get to the same place here in skateboarding, but we everybody's journey is completely different. Yeah. And I think that's the most fascinating part. You know, yeah. it's like your journey was nothing like Dude, my journey no. or your dad or anybody's journey your dad winning a lottery thing to come out that's it. i've never heard anyone on that on skateboarding having that i mean that's thing. where it all started yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like you could have been still out there water fighting yeah, yeah. yeah. dang you know? i could have huh that's yeah. crazy uh, first go back of all with my super soaker thank you yeah. so much <laughs> please you, tell man. alec thank we you. said hi as well please. i was i was hoping Definitely. he would come here today yeah but I'm you sure guys he's... should have him on he should have his own i know i know he's got a lot well listen we know we, I wanted to, we, he's probably jealous right now, right? He's probably like, how is he? Okay, okay. <laughs> Nine wow. Club, got to stay hydrated out oh, there at all so times. Thank got you, the Yeti you, thing. You. And then we got the, uh, we got different colors back there too. So anything, nice. any other the color that you prefer, you. but keep hydrated and the caffeinated. coffee. Caffeinated and mm. hydrated. Good stuff. Perfect. And uh, thank you for everything, the metal yes, and, and, the so and the trees, and the trees, the trees. Thanks, Arbor. Thanks, oh, beautiful. beautiful.